Hey everybody, guess what? We are back. This is African Frame Podcast. I'm not alone as usual. I'm with my co-host, Rob Sibeko, a writer, director, a screenwriter, world builder, all those nice, great things. He also has books out, four books to be exact. I'll leave links in the description below. Do check those out. Uh, and I do have Zanozuko, he's back, the Fire Lord himself, looking all cool. And all the way in have... Kimberly, what up? <laughs> we That's why I'm on my phone. Oh, you're from Kimberly? You're looking down, you're filming from the hole in the ground, you're filming from the hole. <laughs> 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 and then we have, uh, we have Buckmeister Cool from Meister Geek Media and Buckmeister Cool Reacts, uh, a manga author, a comic book writer, an artist, a podcaster, cool guy overall. Yeah, so... Bro. Guys, <laughs> we're gonna be doing uh, the usual, the new Metro uh, segment. So we're gonna be covering films that are gonna be coming out in September 2024. So I hope you guys are gonna be excited. We're gonna give our thoughts on the trailers that we've seen. We're gonna give our thoughts on box office predictions, and we're gonna be talking about whether we like the films or not, the cast, and all that. But before we do that. We just want to talk about the previous films that we made the box office predictions for in the month of August. So uh, I believe Rob has a list over there and then I will give um, the actual numbers that uh, those films received. All right. Okay. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you. Okay. We're going to go from the top. And that is Deadpool versus Wolverine. Our yeah. guesses were between... Okay. For me, it was between 1 billion and 1.2 billion. And I believe for everyone else, um, okay, I don't have names here. Shame it. Um, okay, for this one, I don't have names, but I think other people guessed five hundred million, but I think most people guessed one point two, one one billion. I forgot. All right. So, you, how much was yours again? Uh, uh, it was one point. Yeah, one to one point two. Yeah, I think I think we all kind of guessed for that. Yeah, one I would say. All right. Here's the reveal. How uh, is even sharing the screen? Boom. Yeah. So, Deadpool and Wolverine made one point two hundred and sixty-six billion. We were all wait, wow. wait, wait, wait. Whoa. One billion, one billion. I guess it's one billion two hundred and sixty-six million. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Listen carefully. <laughs> it is one billion two hundred and sixty-six. So, Black Panther one still made more. What? Uh, no, yes, I think um, because floating around. There was an article floating around that Deadpool and Wolverine was going to unseat um, Black Panther as the highest grossing solo film, Deadpool and Wolverine, which, first off, that's misleading because it's not a solo film. It is the yeah. very opposite of a but solo film. But I think it's, the, it's probably anyway. the highest rate, X-rated film, is it not? Yes, that is true. It is. R-rated, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yes. It unseated itself, ne? no? No, no, it unseated the Joker, yes. Yeah, unseated the Joker. But the Joker 2 is coming out, so we'll see how that yeah, goes. Yeah, so I guess we were, we were all right to a certain extent. Yeah. I said 1, point, yeah, I said one to 1. 1.2, somewhere there, yeah. so. Yeah. All right, I'm cool. Five, I'm actually shocked it didn't make more, but I guess, like, the nostalgia kind it's of, the first like... Month. It's, uh, it's the first yeah. month. And also, you know, people are spoiling certain scenes nowadays, so... Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. saying, but like word of mouth is traveling. There's also a lot of spoilers. I don't know if it'll be able to make it past that 1.2 mark because also yeah, people are saying like their eh? story. Like people also are saying like the story is like all right. Mm -hmm. Like they feel like it's like a reason. Like they feel like the story is kind of just a reason for everybody to show up. It's not a reason for like Deadpool and Wolverine to kind of go on this trip or whatever the case yeah. is. I don't That's think it's going to age well. I keep hearing. It's not a movie yeah, that you're going to be watching um, 10 years from now. I was forced to watch it and um, oh, it was a lot of action. And <laughs> forced to watch it? Who held you at gunpoint? <laughs> it's yeah, dog. I, 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 have a, I have a child. Oh. Why oh. is your child watching this? I'm so confused. No, he's a teenager. Oh, no, he's 16. Oh, okay. My dad yeah. would never. <laughs> no, but um, I actually checked. It was it was it, it was more action violence than uh, titties and stuff. So th that's yeah. why I allowed him to watch it. I mean, there was some oh. brilliant action. I mean, you guys yeah. had fun, but I had fun. Well, my action. dad would never in general. He hates yeah. like comic book stuff in general. He would never. So. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's so. go to the next one. Alrighty. 
Cool, cool, cool. And then the number two is the crow. Okay, All we've got right. Kutsu for 45. We've got, um, yeah, I'm R, which means the rest of us guessed 175. <laughs> yeah. You guys are going to be shocked at the reveal. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, let's see. Boom. Let's see. 18. 18.3 18. wow. million. Oh, what? I know oh. I didn't say a high number. I thought it was going to make like Boma 30 or something. And I was just basing it on nostalgia. Oh. Nostalgia and fans. I remember. And fans of the, I remember you guys were, of the actor. were really hoping for the best with this film. But I was like, hell to the no. Even in my notes, no, it says no. here, feels Remember, cheap. we all agreed it was going to be yeah. bad. And yes. then the only reason I gave it, uh, me and Rob gave it a good number was, I know Rob gave it for nostalgia. Yes. And I gave yeah. it because I, I thought um, um, F- 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 FKA Twigs fan would would come out. Mm. Right. And mm. that, and I think I pushed it like, I know it was like between 20 and 30 mil. I know I didn't give it a high number. Mm-hmm. But that was the only reason. I thought nostalgia and the fans of the actress might come out for it. But I didn't, did 18 not. is... Or maybe that was no, just them. Sure. Maybe it was just the, the, the actress's friends. That's why it got yes. to 18. Otherwise, it wouldn't have made it that far. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> but I mean, it's still the first month, so maybe it might do something. No, dude, know. it's flopped. No, it's, it's flopped. No, it's, it's flopped. Because yeah. apparently it's for no one. Okay, um, from what I'm hearing for reviews is the main character is basically like, because you have to remember something, the, the, pro, the crow, the OG crow is like a gothic badass. In yeah. this one, apparently, there's a lot of cry- every, a lot of reviewers are like, "Why is he crying so much?" And apparently, yeah, do you know what I mean? People oh, so like, it's like an emo kid, uh, basically. That's what yeah. They did with him. Uh... <laughs> so they made him soft, and they made it more about her. Um, so yeah, a lot of people are saying <laughs> you took the crow and you went the other way with it. So. So they made yeah, him a side character in his own story, basically. Right? Yeah. Oh, kind of like Max, Mad Max Fury Road. Basically, it's, but instead uh, of like, yeah, he's like a messenger boy. If that's what everyone is saying. So you still see a lot of him, but it's not really about him, if you know what I mean. Mm, I get you. Uh, so, oh well. But I think yeah. even Ibile, I think that's also kind of what hurt Mad Max, kind of, sort of. I mean, because people were like leaving that talking about Furiosa, and it's just yeah. like, well, it's not called Furiosa. You need yeah. Max there. So yeah. much so, so that they even made a prequel. I mean, there were talks about a prequel. Just because of Charlize Theron's performance, people are like, we need a solo Furioso film. That's how. But I mean, also like, yeah, I don't know if like they waited too long, and I still don't know if it would have. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think it's both. Number one, they waited too long, hundred percent, and number two, just because the critics were excited doesn't mean that the the fabulous... audience is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, but, yeah. look, to be honest, Charlize Theron gave a great performance. In oh yeah, movie. of course. No, I mean, nobody's doubting that, but I think also just sometimes as a director, when you're taking on an IP, you need to make sure that you put the main character focused front and center. He's and got I'm, to be, he's got to be, he's, he's at least got to be compelling that he's not competing with too many side characters in his own story. Because once that happens, you start losing fans. Like, that's what I think killed Crow, is yeah. that people wanted to go see the Crow, and now they're seeing this guy who's not the Crow. And it's just like, Ibile, yeah, you're the center of the, but you don't feel like the center. So now what am I here for? Yeah. 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 It got That's so true. bad that the softness of, um, for Mad Max, people basically, because I'm sure you guys have heard of that Mad Max theory of uh, that it's not actually Mad Max. Um, it's actually, oh, yeah. it's the boy from the last Mad Max movie, because in the last Mad Max movie, he doesn't have the car when he leaves. The boy has the car, basically. So how so can people it be are Max? trying to? So people are trying to theorize that it's a re. It's not a reboot. It's like a continuation. It's a sequel. It's yes. a sequel. Wait. It's so a... they're saying Tom Hardy is not Mad Max? Exactly. Tom Hardy is the boy from the last Mad Max movie. It's not. And action. that's not good for the <laughs> Max brand. It's not, it's not good. It's not. Because if they make another one now and they try to bring Max back. People are already gonna feel like it's Furiosa story, not yeah. Max's story, and that just makes the brand confusing. It's like focusing on Q when you're supposed to be focusing on James Bond. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Mm. Anyway, yeah. All right. What's next? Cool. Um. Okay. Yeah. We said not. Okay. It ends with us. 
All okay. right. So this is the movie that became controversial after. Hey, Chief. Now, based on the book sales and stuff like that, my I had the highest guess of so three hundred and fifty million. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the rest of you guys had two uh, shared two fifty. All and the right. Results. So let us look at the results. Had yeah, drum roll. We need the soundboard, guys. We need that soundboard, like the thing where you press the button and it makes a sound. We need that. <laughs> yep. Oh, 285. 286.5 <laughs> oh. million. So we're closer, right? Yeah, you guys are oh, closer. I, w- I would say, Rob, oh, you said 350, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah we so said we, about 250, we, yeah. Yep. So we're closer for now, but it could probably get Change. to that 350 mark at the end. Yeah, but it did very well, hey, for a budget of 25 million? Yeah. Oh, yeah I killed. told you guys. I told you guys. I said, no, you guys don't understand the book sales. But do you think it's the controversy as well? Um, nah, I don't think. No, anything. I think it's I the think book sales. The I think it's the book sales. The contra the controversy probably knocked off another fifty mil. Off yes, it. I agree. Yeah. I think if it anything, was, the controversy knocked yes. another fifty eighty right. mil off it. I yes. think if it wasn't for the controversy, and if people un- like they saw like these people know what they're talking about and they understand the story, I guarantee you it probably would have gone above Rob's um, mm. prediction because yeah. if it did this well. When people were already saying like this person doesn't even know what the story is about, and she and she's produced it, and she's the actress in it. What's going on? And it did that well. Shout out so, to Justin yeah. Baldoni because I think for for him to be, I mean, he took it seriously, and for for this movie to do so well, that's amazing. He also mm-hmm. made himself the bad guy, which I didn't see that coming. So Dog. yeah. By the way, I was at Exclusive Books a few days ago, and I saw that the. I mean, I know books tend to do this, but guess what they did? They made the cover, the film cover, the cover mm-hmm. of the book. Mm-hmm. So they, re- they reprinted it and then they used Blake Lively's face. As no, the... I mean, like, um, uh, hey, man, one, thing saw, one thing that I saw, one thing that I saw, because I, I love the Jason Bourne books. I, I used to read those a lot. Oh, and yeah. those got reprinted, like, all the time. And they kept on showing, um, what's Matt his Damon. face? Matt, Matt Damon. Damon's Matt face. Matt Damon's face. Yeah, and that's like, and the books are nothing like the movies at all. Exactly, because <laughs> I know the same thing happened with Accidental Billionaires uh, by Ben Ben something. Uh, it's based that's on the series. social network. Yeah, that's the one social series. Network. That's one series where the books are better than the movies. Like, if you like the movies, you should definitely read the books. They kill the movies. But anyway, right. yeah, yeah. So that uh, social network film, you just see Jesse Eisenberg there. You're like, oh, so yeah, <laughs> they're basically. <laughs> Trying to sell you this thing, but oh, I guess yeah. it works. Anyway, yeah. what's what's next, Rob? Okay, then we got Blink Twice, the Channing Tatum one that's done by Zoe Kravitz, directed by Zoe Kravitz. That's the one I was interested in. Um, yeah. I've got eighty million, um, and then Zuko's got sixty million. Kutso has got. Okay, I think that's an eighty as well. Yeah, Kutso. Okay, I think most of us have eighty million. Bakmai's also got eighty million. Mm. Mm, okay, guys, you're gonna be surprised, I guess. Uh oh. Uh oh. Thirty-one point four million. Ah, that's painful. Oof, that's painful. Ooh. 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 Oh. Ooh. What's the IMDb? I really thought I heard some positive reviews about this. I don't know. Maybe it's still too early. Maybe yeah, but I don't know. At but this still, point, it's been a yeah, month, dog. Exactly. Like it's not, it's not a, it's not a Marvel movie where people can be like, oh, I can watch this and go back and see yes, Wesley Snipes yeah. again, yes, that's or whatever. True. But also, and also, it's just like I don't know, Channing Tatum as a weird billionaire. It's, it's a hard sell. He's been also, so many frat boys. He's been so many strippers. He's been yeah. a dancer, like yeah. a soldier. Like it's if like, you're trying to sell this guy as a weird eccentric billionaire, it's it's very difficult. Like if he was bread. doing extreme sports or like if he was doing like a crazy like a skateboarding course or something or something of that nature, I I'd, I'd buy it more. You actually just make me realize that Channing Tatum would be the perfect person to be in a Fast and Furious movie, not these other things. <laughs> the way you're explaining him, he he'd, he'd do well in the. It's unfortunate. Well, he'd act, like, he'd act a lot of the people into the ground because he's able to do that quirky, like it's stupid, but you know, we're having a good time. He sells that pretty well. I'm saying, I'm not saying he's above drama and and comedy. He's 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 
kind of good at that stuff. I'm just saying that for the type of movie that Blink Twice was supposed to be, he's supposed to be a dude that, like, he's supposed to be charming and, and bring you in, but he's also supposed to feel, like, weird and off-putting. And, like, Channing Tatum is not weird and off-putting. Yeah, he's oh, pretty yeah. much an open book. Um, I saw a, you know, these sort of, like, variety type of things, or I forgot the goat something where they show two people holding cards and they'll, they'll ask questions like, who do you think is the goat basketball player? So it was yeah. him and, and Zoe Kravitz. And um, Zoe was like a uh, goat movie role. And he's, she's like, not even Blink Twice. He's like, no, Blink Twice was not my, <laughs> my best role. I'm like, dog, this movie just came out now, now. And you're going to say that Blink Twice is not your favorite role? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, well, that's, he, that's bad. Well, you best, are. Or your best role, rather. Even if he was lying, like, and he said this one, just for the PR, it would have... Exactly. would have come yeah, up I guess so, but maybe also it's just because he's trying to do that playful banter and, and women will be like, oh, I'm going to go see this movie to spite Channing Tatum because he's not ah. believing in his wife's dreams or whatever because mm-hmm. they're engaged or whatever the case is. Maybe that's what they were doing. They were kind of doing like a, like, you know, like how Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds were roasting each other for, for yeah. Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, yeah but that works like for that. them because of already just, just, just Reynolds' personality that makes that okay. But for this one, I don't know. That, that's, no, that, I, I, I understand I what he was, try, was trying to do, but I don't think. No, I feel it, you. It's like, it was not the, yeah, this one was not the. Yeah, mm. I think you guys I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's variety, but it's one of those things like lead. Yes, yeah, I, I saw. I saw a, a clip of it on YouTube. Um, I don't know yeah. what it was. I can't remember, but I, I, I see what you're talking about. Yes, because there's I, thousands of these things. It's hard to keep. Yeah, up. those little couple things where they like disagree and disagree and things like that. Yeah, something like that, but slightly different. Because I know Martin and uh, Will Smith also did it. But anyway. Uh, what else do we have? Wait, so who's who's closest? None of us. I am. Because I oh, said yeah. 60. Oh, you said yeah. 60. Hey, yeah. yeah no. But Let's even see. even like, even yours is a whole 30 million. I, but I'm still like... I'm, I'm still <laughs> like... I'm like what? Because I said 60, they made 31. So I'm still like... Oh, just, you doubled. Just, just above 50%. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's next? I drop? really believe no. in Channing Tatum. No, but remember, I did say Channing Tatum has one of those uh, hit and miss at the box office. Like yeah. his one movie will make two hundred million, and then his next movie will make ten million. He's Actually, he's got a very hit and miss record. Yeah, like everybody so loves him as Gambit because I think now. he's talented. But everybody loves I, him as Gambit, but this one is not doing so well. So yeah, mm. if you look at this list of movies, his list of movies is actually not that good right now. I didn't even know Magic Mike's Last Dance came out. It's yeah, but Salma Hayek, didn't it come out well, last Look, I, I just watched it because Salma Hayek was there, but I fell asleep. I, yeah. I've never finished it. I think I watched the first 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Right now, yeah. if you look at his entire his entire thing, if if you exclude many roles, like Deadpool and Wolverine um, and Bullet Train, he's rocking fives and sixes in his entire IMDb right now. It's pure yeah. garbage. And also, Bullet Train was this whole that whole thing where... Sandra Bullock asked Brad Pitt to make a cameo in that movie that she made with Channing Tatum. And, well, then they would feature in Brad Pitt's movie Bullet Train because they also have cameos in that movie. So it was like an exchange of sorts. Mm. Which, which yeah. happens, yeah. But yeah, it looks mm. like he has a pretty bad record right now. He's kind of flopping all over the place. That's crazy. I, I think also he he never he never stuck to a lane. Like he started yeah. with dancing and then he went to action and then and then in between he like and, and then, then he, he did, did rom coms um, and then he did and then he did that romance one. I think if he the, stuck with action and rom com, you would have killed. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. He doesn't have a lane. Yeah, like you, he's he's everywhere. He's he's doing every. You can't do everything. Well, as the, much as I, right. I think he started, um he can he do it. He, he's mm-hmm. got the talent for it, but. People need to associate you with something. You have to have a brand, and then yeah. you can start doing anything. Yeah, right. Because I remember, so in, while he was doing the rom com stuff, he, he was also doing drama. He was doing like Coach Coach Carter, and mm. all these other things. So see if it stuck to those. If it stuck to like dance, romance, 
uh, comedy because he, he also did killing like it. 21, 22 Jump Street. This is the end. That kind of stuff. Nah, and Fox Catcher. That... If he'd stayed with Fox Catcher, he'd be a he'd be an Oscar winning performer right now. That's the one he should have stayed with. But you see, if he followed what Jonah Hill was doing, because remember Jonah Hill would do comedy. He would mm-hmm. do like super bad, right? And then he would do... Okay, I think we've been things. talking about Tatum for too long. We've got other movies, gents. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, as you can so see, so. Rockmeister has a lot of love for Tatum. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> what do we have next, Rob? He gonna make a name for himself. Um, that oh boy good. That boy That's good. Tres, cuatro, cinco. Okay, here we go. Alien Romulus. Uh, All right. The Rock... The Miso has 240, Zuko has 140, Buckmeister shares 240 with me, and Kutso shared 140 with Zuko. Oh. Uh, no, congratulations to, congratulations to you and Rob, to Buckmeister and Rob, because boom. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh wow. 289. Yeah. This one I don't mind being wrong on because yeah. I, I love the franchise. So yeah. Yeah. same yeah. Now that um what's his face got his fingers, I think what's his face has gone has become stale. So now that his fingers are off of it, it's making money again. Good. Who, who's that? Ridley Scott. He needs uh, to reduce his grip, which is such a shame. Yeah, I mean the same. fact that he's he's doing gladiator too, I don't I don't get it. Like, didn't he do Napoleon? Yep, that disaster that was Napoleon, yes. And he did uh, Gods and Kings, and that didn't work out as well. Moses. Yep. Hey, dog, that was... That was like, a long time actually, ago. That was beautiful, but, like, everything else, I don't know. But it, in did, he do, was, uh, did he do Blade Runner 2049? No, that was my... That was my... One of my top five directors, Denis Villeneuve. Oh, uh, Mr. Dune. Mm-hmm, Mr. Dune. All right, let's 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 go. What's What's the next one? All right, jumping straight to the next one. That is Trapped. I had right. 95. Uh-huh. Uh, Zuko had 50. Yeah. Um, Buckmeister had 50. I think I gave it too much and credit. And Kutsu had 50. Yeah, it's very mixed. The results. What, 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 what was yours? Um, I've got 95. I, uh-huh. I it, The premise was good to me. So I had high hopes. All right. So it made 76.6 million at the box Whoa. office. I guess Rob is the closest. Rob is the closest. Hey, yeah. that, it, it, it did better than I thought. The reviews I saw online. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, dog, that premise is fire, man. I told you, that premise. Well, yeah, the thing is, when people, I, I don't know, like, it's it's just that when I hear everything, it's like, well, the biggest compliment I hear is that the performances are great, but the story yeah. is nonsense. Oh, dude, you got to hear about the story. Apparently, this is what I've heard. Okay, so basically, everyone, the reason they say the performances are great is because when they're in the concert hall, Everyone is like, for the first half of the story, this is great. But then the excuses for them to stay in the concert hall start get, to get sillier and sillier. So people start to like it less and less. And then mm. they leave the concert. And that's when the movie just falls off the rails. And it turns out this movie is a, is a concert. They paid. They were like, yeah, no. Nah. Now this is for um, M. Night's daughter. Not for... Not yeah, for I've, heard, I've heard such comments that it's just yeah, about that... M. Night's daughter. Yeah. But so, I like, mean, um, you know, you know, usually there's like studio interference, right? When it comes to certain drafts, yeah. like, or, uh, like for instance with Josh Trank when he was doing the Fantastic Four or for oh, yes. Fan Four, yes, Fantastic <laughs> yeah. Four, yeah. How uh, he had a draft, but then the studios came in and they tried to change it and try to get someone else in and all of that. So it could have okay. been the case, or. Ah, I doubt that M. Night's because M. M. Night's daughter, M. Night's daughter ain't Taylor Swift. Like, exactly. they're, they're, it's not, There's they're not, no. they wouldn't be trying to, like, because, mm-hmm. like, Taylor Swift to me averages hell. Like, I'm, uh, Swifties, I'm like, I don't, I'm sure you don't care, but anyway, yeah. to me, averages hell performance. She's like, she's fine, but like, she's famous. Yeah. Like, yeah. so if she was in a movie, you can see the executives going, we need to get the Swifties in here, we need that Swifty money. Get Swifty. <laughs> right, let's get the M Night Shyamalan. That concert here. had no been a Taylor Swift that. concert. Yeah. yeah, I'm telling you right now, if that concert actually had been um that they Taylor were going Swift to was a Taylor Swift concert and mm-hmm. it was actually Taylor Swift in there, yeah. even if all she did was just be on the stage, that movie would have made uh, 300 mil easy. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Oh well. In the first week, it would have probably made five hundred mil just because of the Swifties. Yeah. So I mm. think this exactly. So I think this was M Night give, being given control. Do your thing, buddy. And this is what he did. Sounds Z- Zack Snyder-ish, but yes, hey. yes, exactly. Mm. Because like the oh, thing is, is like as, the as they try to, as the guy tries to escape, it's just like everybody else around him gets dumber and dumber. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that would be very frustrating to watch. If I was M Night, I'll be like, hmm, you know, there are these two guys that did this other thing, a cat and mouse thing in Japan. It's an anime called Death Note. Maybe I should call them to help me out with this thing. Oh, the Japanese or just watch it so that you can just get some ideas. Exactly. And- because I think and that's one of the things that that movie was missing. Skill. I think it was just missing like a an opposing force. Like as yeah. much as we're following this serial killer, I think if there was like a guy who was like an opposing force to the serial killer, I yeah. think that would have that would have maybe amped up the interest. But yeah, okay, I mean, so the conflict was more in your mind than there wasn't. Not an even actual... in your mind. You're just one sided. Not even in your mind. It's just that you're following this guy that you know is a serial killer, and basically you're supposed to invest in his escape. And then they also said that the ending of the movie was hella stupid. Yeah, I mean. But well, anyway. Yeah, that premise works, guys. I mean, the Japanese. Actually, funny enough, I discovered you know of my film lovers. I used to think it was Japanese that like perfected that art of like the locked in a room type stuff. But in actual fact, the OG person is Hitchcock. Um, mm. You guys know Alfred Hitchcock. He used to yeah, do mm-hmm. these kinds of premises where, like, you're locked in a room, you got to figure your way out type stuff. His old stuff was that kind of thing. Then the Japanese oh. kind of took over because Americans weren't doing that anymore. You can, you can watch some videos about Tarantino where he's like, we don't do story anymore. We just mm-hmm. do character stuff. That's Tarantino talking about a lot of American movies nowadays. So M. Night Shyamalan, it's almost like he's bringing it back and then he fails. So it's, uh, you know... Mm. But yeah, yeah, it, it just I seems know. like it just seems like he needs someone else to. He needs like a Robin in his in his creative thing to help him out and say no, no Batman. I mean M Night. Let's not. <laughs> yeah, George uh, Lucas's wife. Yes, you need like. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wait, anyway, they they're married uh, again. Next? No, his ex-wife. My bad. <laughs> oh no, I yeah, think they ex-wife. are. Or they're together again. Something is happening. Yeah. But anyway. Possible. I, I actually don't know. And then the final one, ladies and gentlemen, is Borderlands. All right. <laughs> so, uh, what? What? Uh, how much did we? What Borderlands. Were we, saying, we were all very generous. We were Bombing all ridiculously yes, generous. Sir. Okay. Okay. I think we're generous because we thought just on it would it would it it would it would float on high. Oh yeah, we did on high for long. And that, that, that was my mistake. That, By the time people idiot. realized the story was whack, it would have already yep. made some money. Yep. Um, okay. For me, it was, it was only Kate Blanchett that made me think it would make so much money. That no one was. Else. It was dead on arrival mm-hmm. for me. Yeah, she looked old. Like... Okay. Okay, like she's could... fine, but like the character she's playing is a very, very young woman. Yes. So for them to cast Kate Blanchett, it was just like, ah, uh, oh, okay. Um, yeah. What, what's wrong with you? You, you might have been better casting off like a Margot Robbie if you needed a name. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but I don't think she she's. Um... Oh no, that's uh, that's. Yeah, I don't think they can afford her anymore after exactly. Barbie. Exactly. That's uh... fifty million per movie right there, man. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay. Cool. So Kutso and Buckmeister and Zuko, all of you guys share 200, 200 million? Lol. Oh, God. <laughs> but it gets worse. We, we I were very hopeful. By far, because I've got 450 million. Oh, oh, oh Lord. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, I like right. the game, guys. Ah, <laughs> we, we had hope. Sheesh. Yo, so we had yeah, hope. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we were hopeful. <laughs> Wing 31.2 million <laughs> oh, on 120 million. Yo, dude, and you haven't even worse, made your budget back, dog. To make you haven't worse, even made this your... thing was released in the Chinese theater on the 6th of August. And you know, usually when they release these movies at the Chinese theater, they have great numbers. Yeah, that's where they make their money first. Yeah, yep. I mean, population wise, China is. Yeah. And also, China doesn't really care. Like, they just watch whatever, so... Yeah, yeah. as long as it's not offensive to, to them or their culture. That they, exactly. They mm. Well, Maybe this was. Yeah. Jeez. Guys, there you go. Those are our predictions. Uh, some wins, some losses. 
Sometimes some we big throw, um, losses. <laughs> we took Wait, so Borderlands next. did the same as um thingy. Uh, blink twice. As uh, as blink, blink twice. twice. Yes. yes, thank you. Yes. No, but I think the budget for blink twice was a bit lower, was it not? Yes, like twenty. It was. I mean, it was way it, lower. I mean, it didn't make its budget back either. No, I mean it, it did. Didn't even make its marketing budget. No, but I'm saying Blink twice did it. Um, it was like 20 million for the budget, and it made 31. So yeah, they yeah, didn't. They did. They didn't bad. break. E- they didn't break even. Yeah, because this realize- one is horrible. Mm-hmm. No, this one is a loss and a half. That's a bomb. That's a beating. Yo, yo, that yeah. is a nuclear. That's a Shinra Tensei. But isn't <laughs> Wait, Crow uh, is also horrible as well though. Yeah. But I'm saying it's worse for Borderlands because one, it's a bigger IP, and two, like that budget is like 120. Like you only yeah. spend that type of money when you're thinking you're going to be hitting 500, 600, somewhere there. 100%. Uh, fair enough. All right. So now it's, not, it's time for our next segment the new Metro releases for tw- uh, September 2024. So, well, I'm Rob not going to lie, us- just off the bat. I'm loving I'm loving these selections. All right, so Rob will give us his, the list, and then we'll go according to the list. Right. Rob, what do you have as the I'll first one? By, okay, let me get my paperwork because apparently this is an office job now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be doing KPIs soon, buddy. <laughs> Dog. I want Jeez, my UAF, that, that. chief. I want my UAF. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, 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 I've sent you my text number. I've sent you my text number. Hundred <laughs> percent, guys. Okay, here we go. Number right. one is Beetlejuice. All right. Okay. Beetlejuice, the sequel to Beetlejuice. The, the, the original one that came out in the eighties. We we know Narada is back, and uh, Michael Keaton is also back. It has Jenna Ortega in it. It also has Willem Dafoe, Monica Bellucci, uh, in it oh, as she well. She looks magnificent. She always looks magnificent, bro. Oh, <laughs> and the uh, screenplay is by Alfred Go and Miles Miller. These are the guys that uh, also wrote, developed uh, Smallville. Um, and then there's another person called Seth Graham Smith. I don't know who that is. Music by Danny Elfman. I think you guys are familiar with Danny Elfman. Yeah. yeah. Directed by Tim Burton, Batman 1989, The Little Jews. Uh, what Alice in Wonderland, Charlie and the Chocolate anything Factory. Anything with anything with Johnny Weird is, is is super weird. That's Tim Burton. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Pope's Bride. Um, was was he also Scissorhands? Oh, gee, yeah. yeah. Scissorhands, yep. Batman, yep. Sweeney Todd. Uh, yep. Yes. Um, oh gosh. Uh, did he did he uh, do the Lone Ranger? He did Say the Lone Ranger, right? Did he do the Lone Ranger? No, oh, I think that's just. I think that's just. Um, what's his face? Um, Johnny Depp. I don't think that's actually him. Uh, but it's Alice in Wonderland. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, man, he did like... Wednesday. He did Wednesday as well. Yes, Wednesday was him. That's Wednesday. Oh. Yes. Yeah, that's. Um, that's that's why Jenna Ortega is in this one. Clearly, oh, sorry, probably loved her performance that one. Oh, I'm gonna be back just now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fact, when I saw the opening of the trailer, I was like, "Is this Wednesday all over again? What's happening?" <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, thoughts on the trailer? Uh, let's start with you, Zooks. Um, I loved it. It was, it was a typical uh, how a teenager doesn't listen to the mom and they bring the drama back. Um, Michael Keaton looked fun. Winona Ryder. I didn't see enough of Jenna Ortega to know what she does in the story, mm-hmm. but, but uh, in the trailer, but Winona, Winona Ryder. Yeah. <laughs> Winona Ryder and Michael Keaton looked good. Uh, mm-hmm. Keaton was killing it as Beetlejuice as usual. I really yeah. don't have from the trailer. I have no criticism. It looked interesting. It it made me want to watch it, and not just for even if I I didn't know Beetlejuice because it wasn't yeah. harking back to the previous stuff too much. It was pushing the current storyline properly, so yeah. it wasn't drawing me, it wasn't drawing me in. By a nostalgia, it was drawing me in of the current story, so I, I liked it, and uh, it looks like it's going to be fun. Awesome, man! How much do you think it's going to make at the box office, uh, bro? With um, Jenna Ortega's rising star, 
the nostalgia when when you realize the nostalgia is you actually you will get a nostalgia hit and a fix mm-hmm. it should make more than 200 mil okay no uh that's a that's an interesting take man uh rob what are your thoughts okay i think we should add a rule from now on you have to say plus or minus so zuko i'm gonna mark you as plus 200 mil yes so if it's under 200 mil you lose <laughs> okay I think All that's right. a fair addition, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... I guess you're going to have to repeat that to Buckmeister when he comes back. All right, cool, cool. I'm here. I got Welcome, back, buddy. Um, okay, so we're doing me. Okay, number one, I actually agree. This trailer looked absolutely fascinating, even from a beginner's point of view. I mm-hmm. did feel like if you didn't, if you don't know um, a lot of the references, I feel like you might get lost a little bit. But apparently, if Zuko doesn't know the old movies, but he still felt like he was following well, then okay, cool. Then it did its job perfectly then. Cinematography-wise, it looked amazing. CGI-wise and makeup-wise, it looked amazing. Um, It really looked... It came together so nicely. I'm really happy with this trailer. Just a little information. The last trailer, the latest one, had about... had approximately 22 million views. So there's good marketing behind this movie and there's good energy behind this movie. So I'm going to give it a solid 400 million. Actually, All no, right. plus 300. Plus 300. Plus? Million. Plus 300. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Buckmeister? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've heard infamous, like the movie's pretty infamous. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, uh, so many rappers reference this guy. So there's probably something going on there. As for the trailer itself, some of the CG looked a little bit wonky to me. Um, William Defoe looks like he's doing Green Goblin again, but I guess that's always fun for people anyway. Um, yeah, there's Geno Ortega. So, like the like, I think the only thing where I was kind of like, eh, don't know about this, is when we, when they were talking about that whole "don't say his name three times," and like she she just keeps saying it, and I'm like. Uh, I feel like I feel like if you were living in this weird house with this weird woman and she was telling you the story about Beetlejuice, like you wouldn't test that theory. But that's just me, anyway. I uh, feel, I feel that's why she did it because she's a, she's a silent teen. I just thought uh, she was she was just a silent. Oh, you know Kunde, when you have, a, you have a teenager anyway, so yeah, that's. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, it look it look. I think out of all the trailers today, I think this is the best mm-hmm. trailer. I think this is the best trailer. I think it does the most. And like Michael Keaton, because he's still in the public consciousness of Batman and and all of that stuff. And like he was hot in the Spider-Man movies or whatever. And people are remembering all of that. Yeah, I think I think maybe I'm sitting with Rob where we plus 300 before this. OK, cool. it was not a bad um, trailer. I just want to add on to that. I just want to say, um. Michael Keaton, there are some roles, like in Batman, in the Flash Batman, it looked, even in the trailer, it looked like he was phoning it in. Do you know what I mean? This one, it looks like he's got energy. I 100% agree yeah. with what he's saying. I'm with yeah. you, man. Anyway, yeah. Sorry, could uh, No, it's okay. I was going to say the same thing. So basically what I gathered from Winona Ryder and uh, Michael Keaton is, I mean, they've played these characters before, so they're extremely comfortable in their roles. And I guess it's also because they've worked with um, Tim Burton before. Especially mm. Michael Keaton. I mean, Michael Keaton has worked with Tim Burton, I think, four times, if I'm not mistaken. The two mm-hmm. Batman films and Beetlejuice. One, uh, I don't know. Yeah, the two else, Batman but, films yeah, that are nothing like Batman. <laughs> yeah. No, don't do it. It's Tim Burton, bro. Yeah. Tim Burton is nothing like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think eh, most... Okay, but anyway, no, and let's not tangent. But going back to this, um, I like the fact that they in- included other characters. It seems like Jenna Ortega's... Uh, Shtick is horror. I mean, she was in Scream and she was in Wednesday and she seems to be getting a lot of uh, raves about uh, when she's doing that kind of stuff. It really works for her. So seems like this is going to do well. I don't think it's going to make around four. I think it's probably going to make around seven to eight. So I'd say seven plus, 700 million plus. Whoa. Oh, I, see that I think nice. I think you really believe in the Beetlejuice brand. I don't know about that. Seven. I think parents... Parents are going to take their kids to this and say, check yeah, this out. It's very kid-friendly. I'm with you, bro. I actually, and I also... Like... Was the original one kid-friendly? Sort no. of. Like, not... It's yeah, a I guess not. It's a, I mean, 
I mean, it's, 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 it's it, kind of it, like Alice in Wonderland. It's kind of like uh, is it, like is it kind of like, like, like that Ghostbusters one thing where it's like supposed to be kid friendly, but they're doing a lot of stuff that's not kid friendly. Yeah, you could say that because you have to remember something. Nineties yeah. PG, sorry, nineties all ages. Eighties was different. Yeah. Was different. Gremlins. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, Indiana Jones one where people yeah. melt. People are melting on screen, and they're like, "Yeah, kids can handle this." Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I think that's why the PG at that time really meant a lot. Like PG yeah. was like parents should really be present when these kids are watching these movies. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, so we are sorted, right? We said mm-hmm. everything that we could say about this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Actually, uh, I just realized. No. Um. Um. Change mine to three hundred plus. I. <laughs> All right. Change mine to 300 plus. I'm actually really, like, the more we talk about it, I'm really feeling this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same here. The mm-hmm. only the only grab that I have, but I get it. I think she, um, you know, the writer did mention it in the film, but I really hoped that Gina Davis would be here because Gina Davis was her mom in the first one. Oh. Anyway. Uh, what's the next one, Rob? All righty. On to the next one. Ozzy, Voice of the Forest. This is a long ass trailer, guys. Yo. Yeah. yeah. It was. This was the movie. All right. So that the casting was the movie. St- Amanda yes. Stenberg. Amanda Stenberg seems like she's everywhere nowadays. Maybe she has a great agent. Jimon Hansu is here. Donald Sutherland, RIP. He passed away recently. I think last month, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, there's RuPaul and Laura Den as well. It was directed by Tim Harper and music by Diane Warren. Oh, Diane Warren. That's pretty cool. Problem is, guys, um, the biggest trailer had 120, 124K views. Not a million, not 124 million, 124,000. Some of them are Wait, 2,000. This, this is the one that was produced by Leonardo DiCaprio, am I yes. correct? Yes. Yes. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah, this looks dead in the water. And I wasn't yeah, I think this, this needs marketing. Otherwise, it's not going to make it. It, it yeah. looks... It looks like so, a simple story. Right. Nothing. Yeah, it looks like mind it looks like about Netflix. it or yeah, anything. It looks, like, but it looks like a good story. It looks like a good solid story. I think you will enjoy it if you watch it. However, if it doesn't get the pro- the promo it needs, I it's not gonna make it because there's nothing. Like I said, there's nothing outstanding about it. It just looks mm-hmm. like a, an, a, a it looks like a good wholesome movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems but, like it's for it's for toddler. Like the same kids who watch Peppa Pig and stuff could be watching this and and Dora the Explorer. Yeah, I mean, I think they're trying to hit that Zootopia crowd. I think, I think mm-hmm. they're trying to they're trying to get because it's a message movie about like yeah. the environment and yes, and yes. all mm-hmm. of that stuff. So I think they're trying to play in that area where it's like, oh, this could appeal to adults and this could appeal to kids. Because, like, there's a couple of jokes in there where it's just like, oh, okay, this is a, this could pass for some adult-like humor, kind of. But mm. I don't think they're hitting it. And, yeah, it feels like it would be something on Netflix. But, yeah. like, you know, it, yeah, it might no, be all right. But it's not, it's not, it's not, I wouldn't put this in the theater. An like influencer, I, an influencer orangutan that can also speak, it's... To humans is yeah, you're well, right. It's, I think it's signing, it's, it's it's signing to streaming to type. Pardon? It's, it's oh, signing, she, but they do she's have signings. Like, yeah, it's the and signing, they are but signing they have, But I'm saying they do have a they do have a um, thingy. They do have like a a, a a a point in the trailer where she does like either talk, whether it's like through a voice box or something yes. or like yeah. the, like an oh, AI like voice yeah. thing. And that oh, was like I, all right, like in Congo, yeah. Yeah, um, but like I said, it, it's it looks like a wholesome movie. I I would I, I I if I saw it on Netflix, I'd probably watch it and I'd probably enjoy it. I'd I'd probably know what what, what was gonna happen twenty minutes before it it does, but I'd probably still say nice movie. But I'm I wouldn't say like oh my god, Ozzy was so awesome. And it's eighty six minutes long, mm. so it's, it's like it's that perfect true. time where. By the time your concentration is about to to like really now give out, it's finished. Yeah, mm. uh, Rob. Um, personally, I think it feels cheap. Um, the frame rates looked a bit low in my for my liking. 
Yeah. Um, I didn't like mm. a lot of this, but the actual, like you guys said, I could totally see this working for kids um, who enjoy, like, isn't it like a fast, and if, there's like a Jurassic Park um, cartoon on Netflix, I think. That's mm. what this felt like. It felt like the mm. Jurassic Park cartoon, uh, okay. 3D cartoon. So I feel like that's the vibe they're going for. And if that's the vibe they're going for, sure. But in terms of it making money and people bringing their entire family over, hell no. Mm. So I'm going to say minus 30 million at the most. It will not make a penny more than 30 million at best. Sheesh. Yeah. Okay, Zuko, how much do you think it's going to make? I agree with Rob. It won't make more than... Yeah, like, minus 30. Minus... The, I like, it, it'll be lucky if it makes 20 mil. Because yeah. Because like I said, there's nothing outstanding about it. Mm. You know, there's nothing that goes like, whoa, okay, let me go check this out. It it just feels like something you'd watch on ETV while you're chilling, waiting for... Like, you on a Sunday like, afternoon. Like, like, yeah, yeah, like, Utopia's or, trailer, if I'm remembering it, it didn't really, like, kind of reveal the heavy plot twist and everything. But I think because it looked so good, I think that was kind of the thing that drew people in. Yeah. So yeah. this Disney. one doesn't have that... Mm. Yeah, Disney, it just, Disney when it comes it to animals nice. and the quality of like the fur and like the eyes, the textures basically, they're all out. So with these ones, it kind of looks like it was kind of like made in studio paint, but it's meant to look 3D, which is not type of thing, you know. Mm. But I think I agree with you guys. I would actually take it lower. I would say minus 25 million i don't think it'll oh, do more than 25 bastard. minus 25 too close. <laughs> i see I don't, the think it'll, I don't think it'll make more than 25 i'm with you there. okay now that's good stuff that's good so um back just to confirm what's your number minus 30 Right. Mm, oh no actually no let me go with kuto on this minus 25 i All see right. exactly what he's saying yeah, i don't think, think you will i don't think you'll make it past that Yep. I, wish, I wish you could find a way of finding out how many theaters it's in. I wish there was a way we could look that up. Because then that mm. would really help us figure out how low these numbers are going to be. If you are watching this and you work but you work at New Metro or you work at Stay Kinico or whatever and you have that information, please do DM us. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So what, what do we have next, Rob? All righty. The next one is The Forge. Um, uh, yes. This is a weird one. Yeah, this is a Christian movie. So basically, the um, you could tell by the lady. The lady's name is Priscilla Shear. Uh, she was in the War Room, which is one of the biggest Christian movies of recent years. And the old lady as well was in War Room. Like there's a famous clip of "You've done it, Lord. You've done it again, Lord. You've done it again." So I don't know if it's the same characters. Or if it's just different characters, because these are the people that gave you um, War Room, um, Courageous. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that director. I guess you could say he's like the Tyler Perry of Christian movies. I was about to say, this feels like a a slightly more competent Tyler Perry. Yeah. Yes. 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 A very competent Tyler Perry. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Because his, his movies Perry, t- he's tend to be slightly competent. a bit long, but but the, he hits the the right spots, the the messages and everything, and it seems like he likes using the same actors as well. Yeah, mm. kind of like Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, but these so movies the, make money, I think. They yes, do. they do make they money do. because as as a Christian, all you see all the time is is booty booty killing killing. Yep. Yeah, you know, and people bashing Christianity. So when you see a Christian movie that's uh, being positive, mm. that's being progressive, that's being um, that's highlighting, and it's and it's wholesome as well. Yeah. you will go watch it because, like, you you don't want to. As I'm sure, as especially the the older you get, you don't want to be watching booties all the time. You don't want to be watching fighting all the time. True, but you right. still so, want a competent story. But you still want a competent and, story. Yeah, and you still and this. Okay, but this, like we gotta address this, something. This, this has um this has also the the Aussie feel to it, as as in it's it's nice. It looks like a straight to TV movie. Like mm-hmm. there's nothing too terribly wrong with it. But yeah. you 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 you'll see. You could see if you watch it. You'll say like, okay, this could be improved. This could have been tighter and things like that. Exactly. So it looks, it, it looks like, like, um, like yeah. in, in terms of excitement, 
yes, that's the word I'm looking for. In terms of excitement, it looks like it'll be like a five out of ten. You know, it, it won't be horrible. It won't be great. It won't be terribly exciting. It won't like lull you to sleep. Yeah, like the However, kids it, 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 great, yeah. yeah. No, but yes. like also, guys, we gotta address something. Why is there a sword? They have like the literal. Is it the Knights of the Negro table? What's yes? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, yeah, that, I'm not gonna like that part. I like. It seems that like it's sort I of like like a, like a secret uh, no, brotherhood. That felt, that felt weird to me. That felt weird because I'm just like, there's nobody just walking around with Karen a caliber. Yeah. <laughs> in no, but pocket. it was at the secret place, or it was at the meeting. It wasn't just at a. So it wasn't at his swords? office. Like that just. No, so... but like Buck, it was at the offices. At the <laughs> offices, they'll have their things. It doesn't make. Like if if it was at an office uh, at the at the park, that would be weird. Yeah, that would but be if, weird. But if I'm at my um, if at my headquarters, if I'm at my headquarters, I will have if I have robes, I will have robes. If I have torches, I will have the torches there. If yeah, like if that's what my my society yeah. has, a cult or a at, party or yeah, a my cult or my friend, whatever. Yeah, so at my headquarters, that would make sense. So yes. maybe that's why I didn't find it weird, because mm. I think at your headquarters you will have the things. That represent your. But I do, I do, cult. I do get. I do I, get what I, I, I'm gonna just say cult for a lack of a better word. But that's what I'm saying. No, I'm just saying it feels like it's strange because I'm just like they playing this straight, and it's all just like regular life. And this guy's gotta get his life together. And like this guy's like, I'm gonna step into your life and be your father figure. And then all of a sudden, um, Excalibur, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I think, okay, I think it didn't feel was... all of a sudden to me because um. It. They introduced him to the society. Then they intro- they introduced him to the brotherhood, and I then when they saw I that he was, was making like a regular men's meeting, where you're, you know, like you like guys are like, you got to get your life together, man. You can't be doing this to your mama. I thought that was that was what it was. And then when they all pull out swords, I was just like, wait, so no, but huh? it's why sword. But but Buck, you make it you make it sound like um. They pulled out the sword at his first meeting. It wasn't his first meeting. It was like further along in the meeting, further you know along I think, the, you know I when think he was be, brought in. You know, I think it could. It might be. It might be a bit of a. I don't know how to explain it. Like a bit of a glitch when we were watching it, because I think I I had the same feeling with as Bug. Maybe it's because we're watching a group of black men holding swords. It's not something that we're used to. You know what I mean? Like if it was like mm-hmm. white people that had like. A, Illuminati type shit. Yeah, that that would have sort of made sense because of what the media has fed us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's Ooh, we're not yeah. used to seeing the media feeding us black a group of black guys with swords. Yeah, well, maybe, the, the, but the, I'm just the, saying the, the, the black like, Nazi. Maybe, but I'm saying like <laughs> also from the trailer, it's like bro feels like he's working in like a you know like he's working on the ground like in an Amazon like warehouse. So I'm just like, okay, uh, that, that, I that, guess, that is the how do we, also. does, how does he qualify for like a secret society? And also I'm just like, like a, a secret society in a story where a dude's just got to get his life together. That feels kind of. That, now that point, that makes more sense. Your point now there for me makes sense because one, nowhere was he shown that he was a genius, but he's lazy. Nowhere mm-hmm. was it shown that um, he is, is, is special in a certain field. But mm-hmm. he doesn't want to do it because his daddy left him and his daddy was good in that field. So it wasn't to be like his daddy. Like there was no issue to show why his life was the way it, it is. So And also you know, I'm like and how he and also there's no nothing was shown secret to, society. Yes. No, nothing was shown to make him qualify for secret society. Like if um his mom was dating the head guy, that would make sense because it was like, okay, you're my son, so I'm bringing you my stepson, so I'm bringing you in. That 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 point of yours makes sense. Okay, That's I... kind of why the sword threw me off because I was just like there was maybe I have to watch the movie which I don't think I will. But I'm just saying in general it just felt like okay it's a dude getting his life together. It's like regular life, you know. You gotta shape up, uh, you know, like you are my son, but you're like a freeloader. And then all of a sudden it's secret societies and there's Excalibur and a sword. And I'm just like wait, uh, I, did I miss <laughs> something? <laughs> Rob, what no, funny think? enough, actually, that was my favorite part of the movie, like uh, yeah. a secret society, because maybe also I'm also just thinking that's probably the type of things we also need. We need like societies where yeah. as Majita, as Bodaki, we come together and we help each other out and to, to push. 
and we don't just chow we actually help and push yep uh. i think that's actually 100 percent true i think it's a I, I do that's what i think when my dad plays golf with all those like successful black men i'm like you know what then you guys probably have a sword there as well they just don't tell us about it <laughs> do you know what i knight <laughs> thee <laughs> no, uh, what's honey? I want to see now, um, a uh, uh, rob. Your, yeah. uh, 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 your dad must have umkonto. He can't have a sword. He saw the funa. Must be a spear. Yes. Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kunopi <laughs> river. Yes. Uh, no I think I think you guys basically covered my thoughts as well on this. Uh, the only thing that I have in mind is Priscilla is is very it's quite big in the Christian community. And you have a lot of mega churches that might uh, go and support or go and watch this. Um, okay. So, box I'm gonna office follow wise, what you say. box office wise, I think this might make around three hundred plus, three hundred million plus. Yeah. That's what I think. Okay. So before before Kem said all that he said, I was gonna give this uh, a young twenty thirty mo. But right. now he, but now that he's telling me of the following and how um, the Kendrick brothers, because I saw in the trailer is another Kendrick's brother movie, and one of the comments said, "Ooh, I love the Kendrick brothers. They have the best movies." Yeah, they do. They really do. Their so, movies are really good. Yeah. So one of the comments said that. So, and now that Cam has brought up that it, they they're big in the in the black churches and everything like that. Uh, 300 doesn't seem that far fetched because, like I said, this movie just seems wholesome I would enough. I say minus 300, though. I don't think it's gonna hit. But uh, yeah, I would say, um, like, like I said, I was gonna give it 2030, but uh, now I'll give it uh, plus 200. Okay. okay. So, uh, Buckmaster. Minus 300. I don't think it moves past 300. Oh, okay, Rob. Um, okay, just so I can give my opinion on the movie itself, I just want to say, um, I think there was some good actual positive energy to it. I thought the lady section kind of fell apart because it looked like a different movie entirely. It's like, it looks like a comedy with the no, ladies. It goes from, yeah, it goes from a drama to a comedy, to a drama to a comedy. And it's such mm. weird stereotypes. And I have a feeling that's going to negatively impact it. I think it's going to be one of those movies that makes its money back via streaming. So I'm yep. going to put it at 50, minus 50. Um, but just wait, um, you said minus what, Buck? You said what I said minus 300. I don't minus think it moves 300. past 300. Yeah, look, these these are the type of movies that make a lot of money after they've been uh, at the theaters, like uh, DVDs and uh, Blu-ray yeah. and streaming. They yeah. make a lot of... But I think after the success of War Room, that's why I'm thinking that it might make the amount that I mentioned because War Room was is a cult classic. Like it's it's one of those movies in the Christian community that you always find clips for, or you find this lady somewhere, Priscilla somewhere, doing oh, something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But just so you guys know, it only got like two hundred and fifty views, two hundred fifty thousand views though. So that's why I'm worried about it. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. what's next, Rob? Speak no evil. This mm. one. Uh, oh, okay. So quick, guys. Before I, so I checked. I saw Speak No Evil and I clicked. I didn't realize Kanti. And then mid watching, I see six years ago, and I'm like, huh? Six years ago, didn't uh, Rob say this movie's coming out this month? But then, after I finished watching that one. I go, I go, I scroll down, and then I see the actual one, and I'm like, oh, so they took it from, uh, was it was it Holland? Oh. I think the so. Oh, it's so you think it's the, a it's a remake? Yes, it's a remake from a European movie, and I just I didn't have the chance to to like research it, so I watched the original trailer of the first movie, and then I watched the this one that we're gonna be reviewing. Oh. It All right, looks so good, guys. I it just looks- want to say that uh, the, so the cast includes James McAvoy, Professor X, uh, the guy from Split, and Mackenzie Davis. Uh, Rob, she was in Tully, the younger Tully. Ah, yes. And she was also she was also in Love, Death, and Robots. That episode she has with uh, Gugumba Taro, um, and some of the people I have no idea who they are. But uh, yeah, it seems like it's also giving. 
M. Night Shyamalan vibes a bit. Yeah, because yeah, there's yeah. a lot of suspense, but yeah, you don't but really the, know what's there's happening. something that's throwing me off about the trailer because the family that's supposed to be weirded out, they're yeah. acting weirder mm-hmm. than the actual weird family. If you get what I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> everybody's weird. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like James McAvoy and the actress that and the actress that he's acting against, they feel more like a couple and like a uh, a family. Yeah. Than the right. Americans who are supposed to be like, like you know, off put by the weird yeah. stuff happening. So, like, at the beginning of the trailer, it feels like James McAvoy and that lady, I forget her name. It feels like they're married and it feels like they have their son and it feels like they're like the regular people. And then it feels yeah. like the American family is the pod people. So I feel like it's going to be a very conflicting movie when like the people who are supposed to be normal are really not acting normal because if you look at that dad the guy who's playing the american dad he feels like he's off or he feels like he would be like a serial killer but like we were supposed to be sympathizing with him and i'm just like i don't feel like i feel like james mcavoy should be running from you i feel like the trailer has to force (laughs) james mcavoy to be the bad guy you think they were miscast big time Okay. I've, I I I see your point, and it actually um, it, uh, it holds up. It, it holds up, but everybody's a little weird. And so when James McAvoy is becoming weird and weirder, they don't really notice it because they're also just a bit weird. Right. Yeah, I know, but Maybe. I'm saying like the the whole I'm just premise. That one. But I'm just saying like the whole premise is that it's supposed to be like a regular family being trapped in like this weird situation, and I just feel like that mm. regular family is way weirder than the family they're supposed to be trapped by. So it's and okay. It's, I found the I found the original. It's a Danish one. It's uh, a Danish movie. Oh my! The Danes make such scary movies, bro. Like what the hell? I know you guys don't also, see the Also, I'm sun, just like, depending like, on the trailer, damn. like, the trailer didn't make it feel like they were friends for a long time. It kind of felt like they met up for a weekend. And I'm just like, I'm yeah, cool, like, I'm cool with a lot of that. Trust- that was the weird part for me. That was the weird part for me. Trusting? It felt like... It, it felt like they just met that weekend. Like, it took so me a year like, before I actually seen someone... Camilo's house. So I'm like, dog, I can't just meet you off the strength of a weekend and, and a brunch. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm going to your secluded <laughs> place in the woods. I just feel like that's my recipe from disaster. If it was, um, if it was like, uh, let's say I meet up with Buck, and then I'm like, um, let's go to my place for drinks, or or, or come back, I'll come to my place tomorrow. We can have like a braai or something. That sounds. But coming over for the weekend when I just met you today, like. Mm, it just feels it. It felt off already there, but I was like, okay, let's go with it. However, it does look creepy as fuck. <laughs> I'll give it yeah. that. Rob, what are your thoughts? Um, I think James McAvoy is a flipping genius. I think he's killing it. Um, it gave me a lot of the split vibes, hundred percent. Um, I think the slow build up that seems to be happening is fantastic. Um. I'm curious about this other one now that you guys have been talking about it so well. I bet you it probably is a lot more intense because, like you said, some of these Europeans, they make some of the most unique storytelling where it's like, oh, snap, I wish I'd seen this before from their perspective. So I'm mm. 100% on your side on that one. But I think the energy behind this movie is good. Um, I think people are really excited to see it because, check it out, 21 million views. Whoa. That's 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 almost as big as Beetlejuice, which had twenty two million views. This so is Sony, right? Something. This hmm? is Sony. Sony so. Pictures, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think it's Blumhouse this time. Or is it? Or is it Universal? One of the two. I think it's Universal. I could oh, be okay. wrong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, box office pro- uh, predictions. Let's start with uh, you, Zooks. Oof. Horrors don't really. I'm gonna be hopeful. And say 150 plus. Okay, right. Buckmeister? 100 plus because of. No, maybe 150 plus because of James McAvoy. He's a name, so. Mm. Uh, Rob? 
Um, I'm, 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 all, I'm totally across you guys as well. I agree with it. And that energy looks so good. So I'm going to go for 200, 200 minus. All right. Uh, I give it 250 minus. All right. Mm. Wait, why so high? I don't know. I think uh, it is, I mean, it is also, it is giving, like you said, split vibes, also giving out, giving a bit of uh, get out vibes. The lady uh, that I mentioned, uh, Mackenzie, um, she's she's quite a known actress by now. Also James McAvoy. So those two, I think, might draw some people, especially in the States. So, I mean, because like I said, she did love, love Death and Robots and she was mm -hmm. really brilliant at it. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. Mm. All right. What do we have next? All righty. On to the next one. It is Wild Robot. All right. This one, this I one, have no idea. This one happening. stars Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Pedro Pascal. You should have watched the second trailer. <laughs> mm hmm but the first trailer was also pretty cool. But okay, sorry, sorry, um, Kim, continue. No problem. Uh, it says that the epic adventure follows the journey of a robot, Rosam Unit Seven One Three Four, Rose for short, that is shipwrecked on a on an inhabited island and must learn to adapt to the harsh surroundings, gradually building relationships with the animals on the island and becoming the adoptive parent of an orphaned gosling. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the first trailer I watched, it was no sound. It was just basically the visuals. Yeah. So basically, in that one, you see that this robot lands um, these, um, not ferrets, what they're called again now. I'll call them ferrets now because I can't remember their oh, name. Oh, otters. Otters. Yes. Thank you. These otters, they, they basically uh, disturb it and activate it. And then it's it basically then just adapting to life there. Mm. And as it's adapting, um, it uh, 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 what uh, a goosling ha hatches, the uh, egg hatches, and it turns out it's a goosling. And obviously, they imprint. So the first thing they see is that's who they call mama. Yeah. So basically, then it raises it, and um, and it also uh, like there was and, a and, fox and then there, obviously right? something happens where there's now conflict but it's not really clear but i i i kind of like those trailers because it, it 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 makes me intrigued it's like okay what's going on i don't like being spoon fed everything so this one there was mm -hmm. literally uh you no know, so that's why i loved i liked about this trailer it actually made me use my brain like i didn't i wasn't just watching and not paying attention mm -hmm. i had to watch mm -hmm. and, and so that's why i enjoyed this trailer and but basically, uh, this robot it's it, it gets to the wild, it um and uh, it uh, it adapts to the wild it uh, and because obviously it's an animation movie, it starts learning how to speak in animal. And uh, then they the the owners of it they find it and they want to bring it back, and that's where the conflict happens, the big the big final conflict. Yeah, but. But, but the first trailer I watched was brilliant, which which is the reason I wanted to go watch the second one because I was like, oh my god, what's happening? This is so interesting. And uh, I watched the second one, which was more dialogue dialogue based. Okay, and, I just yeah, watched it, it the one. It looks good, yes, man. It, it 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 looks good. Um, the anim uh, I read one of the comments that said, uh, so this is where the budget for Mega Mind went to. <laughs> 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 yeah. How much okay, do you I'm, think it will get in the box office? Um, oof. that's like the thing is with um with cartoon movies is they need to be liked by the adults as well, and I'm sixty forty that it will be generally liked by the adults. It it looks a very good kid movie. Like for, I think kids will love it. It's uh, the robot is, is 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 funny. It's cute. Um, 
Let me be hopeful and say 150 plus. It looks like it looks a good movie to me. Mm. Okay, Bugmeister, what do you think, man? Uh, well, I only watched the one trailer, so I didn't really know what was going on. Uh, it does look in there's I don't know, like it feels it felt a little bit inconsistent because some of the water stuff looked a little bit weird to me, but like all the land stuff looked really good. So mm. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, um, it's uh, apparently all these animals, like, it just feels weird that all these animals are kind of, like, gravitating towards the bot, because I feel like the animals will just be doing their animal thing, but, like, at some point in the trailer, there's a group hug, so I don't know mm-hmm. if it, like, if they, if it became queen of the island or whatever the hell is, is going nah, on. Nah, it basically just adapt. remember, it's a, it's a robot, so it learned. So it learned how this no, animal I'm saying, works, I get how that. that animal works. So that's where it develops relationships with the animals. No, I'm saying the that part I understood is just that the group hug with the and with all the animals was weird to yeah, me that because was weird. I was just like I don't know why they're group hugging, but okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, uh, I guess it having an attachment to the island. Um, I'm also wondering if, like, it's got an unlimited battery source or if it's solar powered, because it's basically got to just charge itself the entire time. Mm. Uh, I don't know. That just, that was a thought in my head. And then also, like, when they tried to put the robot in danger, I was just like, you've got way too many options to deal with these animals for me to be afraid that an animal's going to get you, so... But anyway. Okay, yeah, but it, it was other robots. It wasn't an, it wasn't other animals. Oh, it looked like it was an animal, but maybe I missed it. Anyway, yeah, I mean, it looks looks fine, it looks good. I just don't know what the how they're gonna build the conflict or the story or the characters. And it looks like to, they to summarize it basically, Buck. It's a a robot has its programming. It evolves, and it, it its programming evolves, and then they try to take it back. And it's just like, no, I actually like it here. I don't want to go back. Yeah, it's it's more like uh, a modern a modern idea being mixed with nature or yeah yeah with nature. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's not it's out of its habitat uh, for lack of a better term. So it it has to mm-hmm. now adapt to a new habitat. Uh, anyway, box office, box office wise, I'm thinking hundred and hundred and fifty, maybe. 150, uh, 150, 150 minus, yeah. Okay. All right, Rob? All right. Um, I've been doing my numbers. To me, it gave me great Wally energy. Yep. Um, my thoughts it, exactly. It gave me fantastic, and that was, of course, that blew up may- immediately. Um, just so you guys get an idea of the view count, trailer one was 13 million views. Trailer two was 15 million views. It's only going up. Oh, so okay. I feel like oh. there's positive vibes here. Uh, might have to okay. change my might have to change my yeah, prediction. I'm then. also gonna change mine. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> no, because I like I didn't think the trailer would be because I didn't check the trailer numbers, but I, I, I it looked good to me. Like I said, it looked yeah, good it to me. Amazing. It looked like a story. Yeah. Oh, it reminds me like in a little giant robot or that's all. Oh, yeah, the, the, Iron the, Giant. The, the Iron Giant. Yeah, yeah, Iron Giant. Thank you. Hmm. But it also does have Wally vibes to it, bro. Yep. Fine, give me your new numbers. Um, okay. With those view counts. I'm going to go 250 say... plus. Yeah. Right. I'm going ultra positive. 250 plus. Well, right. I'm saying, yeah, yeah, about to, yeah, 250 plus. I'm really... So you're both 250 plus. All right, cool. Yeah. Mine is 400 million plus. Um, because I've been looking it up, Minions is about slightly higher than that, and they produce, of course, way more money. So, um, that's my leaning towards. It's gonna try and go for that. It it should go for the Wally audience, but I have a feeling the Minions audience might show up too. We'll have to see. Um, because I feel like people are hungry for some Disney stuff that's actually good. Um, I believe what um Inside Out two just made um over a billion, if I'm correct. Mm. What really? Yeah, it did, it yeah. Killed. that's insane. That is yeah. crazy. So people are hungry for this kind of stuff, and of course we all know about Puss in Boots too. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna stick with 400 million plus. Um, could so you? Uh, you're right. It made over a billion. Inside um, Out two, a billion. Wow, I'm shook. 
I thought it okay. was going to make like almost 200 300 yeah. So yeah basically my thoughts are just like this thing is just trying to adapt it's lost um and cannot go home so apparently probably it's just going to be like a journey of this robot trying to get used to this place because it looks like it was falling off a cliff a few times in the trailer uh but also I did see a scene where it seems like uh there's sort of like a what do you call this thing where they where the animals go elsewhere because of the change of season I forgot the the term a migration migration yeah it seems like there was a migration thing and it seems like it it was very emotional because of that because its friends are leaving or her friends are leaving um seems like there's a wolf uh, sorry a fox that's going to be a major character in this as well um uh, doesn't so, look like they're doing talking animals though also no yeah. the animals talk the animals talk yes oh uh, okay okay wow. i actually didn't know that I didn't know that either. I thought it was just like uh maybe the AI in the robot is the one that's talking voice yeah. by Lupita. But uh I yeah, uh, but, you know, um remember remember what I said uh, in the second trailer it basically learns the language of the animals. Oh, so it's okay. How they so communicate. It's, and it's obviously like but because it's uh, it's for humans obviously then they'll change it to just English. Oof, now you got me thinking about Ice Age now. Yeah, I think maybe we're looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, but okay. Um, I think it's gonna make three hundred and fifty plus. Ah, why not? Because after all, Ice Age made three hundred and eighty-three, so you might be right. Hey, man, the first one. Yeah, the first one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do we have next, bro? All righty, on to the next one. That is the Bag Man. All right, the Bag Man. Get that bag, boys. Yeah, the hey, most generic like, looking. Yo, John Cusack. That is like John Cusack makes looks like a very good hitman. Like when you look at him, you don't think he'll he'd make a good hitman. But when he's doing it, you're like, actually, this dude looks like a really good What, hitman. Is that John Cusack as that's the, John as the Cusack? bagman? Yes, that's John Cusack. Are you sure I didn't look at the wrong movie, bro? The bagman with De Niro. No, you no, that's the wrong movie, bro. That's not the right one. Bro. Oh, my bad. I, don't, I, don't, I can't find it here, Rob. Let's give oh, there it is, next to Wild oh, Robots. Oh, okay. Let's, let's give this man a minute to watch the trailer. <laughs> okay, no, I watched the wrong one. Wow. Yeah, you okay. watched an entirely wrong one. Okay, yeah, yeah maybe, I was about to maybe, be like John. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe while we give our thoughts, just check it out quickly. Uh, so we'll end with you. So okay. maybe Buck, Buck, you can give us your thoughts. Okay, so first off and foremost, they are really trying hard to make a bag look scary. I'm sorry, gents, it doesn't know. It's just a zipper. Oh, it's the bag man. I'm going to zip you up like I. I, I. Right. And then also the whole um, he will find you. He like you know, like Jason much, Freddy much, like mm-hmm. freaking. Who else? Mike Myers. He will find you. Hey, these these serial killers are great. Are great at GPS. They're like just like stalkers on another level. Like leave them alone, bro. Also, I'm just like when I'm looking at the guy because you get some shots of the bag man. I'm just like you feel like a regular guy. Like I feel like like if I like if I took a baseball bat or if I took a cricket bat to your head, I feel like you'd go down. <laughs> mm. <laughs> And but also, that, yeah. this character is he scared because of the stories that his dad used to tell him? That's why he's scared of this thing. Yeah, it's it to me. It's chasing that it's money. That's what I wrote here. That was my notes. It wants that it's money. Yeah, because I mean, there's kids involved, and mm-hmm. and look, I'm not trying to bash on on child actors or whatever, but I'm like the act the kid actors in it kind of look like they were a little bit more aware of what was going on, and the kid actors in this don't look like they're really aware of what's happening. So I don't know if that's going to be something that will draw people in. Maybe it'll make because also the other thing is the way they describe him. It's not like they're describing a serial killer. It just kind of just like feels like they're describing a pedophile. <laughs> Mm. In a way, yeah. He'll yeah. give you candy, and it's just like, yeah, really? Okay. So I'm assuming anyway. these two guys, uh, the brothers, are like the main characters. I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, I'm guessing so. I'm but anyway, that. um, box office prediction for me, maybe forty, forty plus. 
Okay, that's not bad. Uh, Rob? All right, to me, I actually don't hate this trailer. I think it reminds me, it's a cheap, it looks like a cheap version of it, number one. So okay. um, it looks like a cheap version of good trailers, but they mm -hmm. did, a, that, but it looked like it had a little bit of heart to it, if that makes any sense. Having right. said that, some of the jump scares are fucking corny. I agree with that one. Um, like the whole zipping, oh, look, I'm holding a bag, zip, cut, jump cut. Yeah, no, don't do that, guys. But it's something that came together to show like generic hardcore horror fans. I think mm. Conjuring fans might as well avoid it. But Nun yeah. fans, um, people who watch The Nun and what's another corny one that's like, but still made money. Um, but like, yeah, that's those people, The Nun, The Nun, Annabelle. Um, I don't think it'll make money like it follows. But to be fair, Babadook didn't make money. Um, so I'm going to hit it up with. Because, oh, by the way, the view count for this one was half a mil was 400,000. So that's a flippant joke. So I'm going to give it um, minus 20 million. All right. No, no problem. Um, so I agree with what you guys said. I did get contouring vibes, but I felt like it was a cheaper version of it. The main character doesn't really draw me. He looks like he might be a good actor, though. But yeah. I'm not feeling this whole my child is in danger thing from him. Yes. Uh, but I am feeling the childhood trauma part, though. Um, the other brother, I don't even think he even said a word in this. I could no, be wrong. not in the trailer. Yeah. So I don't know. I, it's just not really calling me, man. Yeah. I think this is one of those movies that you watch on streaming while you really have nothing else to watch. Also, um, I'm just sick of horror movies where people don't move. Also, uh, there's something I wanted to ask you guys, but I think I've mentioned this a few times or a couple of times. Is are they trying to make horror the next big genre after superhero films? Maybe. Um, it's possible. The thing is, because it seems like it's either between animation or or horror. Um, I think I think what happened was there was a time when that was happening because I looked it up right now. Actually, funny that you mention it. It was you know the time of it. Do you yeah, know how yeah. much money it made? Mm -hmm. It one made seven hundred and one million for a horror Wait, movie. Wait, by it one, are you, which one are you, are you talking about? The old old it, or no, are you talking no, about no, the no. one? I'm talking about the new movies. Twenty seventeen oh, okay. it, and All then right. chapter two made four hundred and and eighty million. So that's a billion with two movies. They don't do horror movies. Don't do that. So I have a feeling they have budgets possible. of like ten million. Exactly. So I think there was a movement at that time, but I think the movement has kind of fallen apart already. That makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I think it's failed. Also, I think mm -hmm. superhero I movies, superhero movies have a bigger bag of tricks than horror movies do. Like right. superhero movies have way more tropes. Like you can turn a superhero movie into a horror movie, but you can't turn a yeah. horror movie uh, into a superhero movie. Multiverse of madness. Sure. But also, don't yeah. forget. Um, also, horror movie fans are loyal. Like they're going to watch your movie. Do you know what I mean? But there's not that many. Like, yeah. I even avoid horror movies myself, so there's not enough people <laughs> to justify it. So, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Zooks, what do you think? Yeah, I watched it. Um, it looks generic. Nothing really said, oh, wow, this is different. It felt like a mixture of Freddy in terms of the creepiness of it. Oh, okay. But also felt like um, just it felt like a, a serial killer. It, it didn't really feel like a supernatural movie. It just felt like a serial killer who kills kids, actually. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so oh, hands the Freddy thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, bro, move. Like just just leave. If you're hearing things in the middle of the night, chief. Hey, in Tanga, you mm. like, like, must remember. There's it's no the but, memes, dog. There's no you money to move. Black There's people no don't stick around. I'll, 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 i will 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 i how 
Uh, it'll be lucky if it makes 30 more, hey? Eh? So minus 30. I don't know, like, like nothing really... Nothing really said more. I, I don't know. I think because I'm home, I'm feeling so generous. I'll give it 30 plus. <laughs> oh, 30 plus. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rob, did you give your... Okay, so Buck was 40. I was minus 20. Um, okay. So it's just you now. Uh, I think it'll make... Minus 20. Uh-huh. Well, I'm the nicest to this one. <laughs> yep. Pardon? You're the nicest. Wait, am I the highest one? No, no. I'm the highest. Oh. And, and you know what? To be fair, generic, remember, there's a reason why Blumhouse makes money because there's always a safe number for horror movies, generally. Mm. So mm. you're actually not wrong. If anything, it's the rest of us are taking a chance. It's just, I looked up the Babadook, mm. and can you believe it? It was successful, but it only made 10 million. That's crazy. How much, how much did Tarot make, Rob? Remember we were doing uh, Tarot a few months ago? Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, let me see if I can find out. 20. Around the same time as Garfield, I think. Yeah. You're at, do I have that written somewhere here? Do I have our guesses? No, and we didn't. It, it's, yeah. it's before we started writing stuff down. So right. I don't... Yeah, but now, nah, 20. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Even though it had Ned from Spider-Man in it? Exactly. And look, sometimes oh, the corny man. movies make money. Look at Imaginary. Imaginary was supposed to be corny for a lot of people. It made 39 million. That's the Ryan Reynolds one, right? I believe it is, yes. Imaginary, sorry. Imaginary. Mm. Imaginary friends, no? All right. If so I, if, what's, yes. what's the next what one? Yeah. Uh, all right, buddy. Um, Hellboy. Didn't even know this movie was coming out. Me uh, too. I did. I did. Oh, I saw the trailer been, last month already, or two yeah, months ago. I mean, I've been. Uh, well, I'm. I'm. I've read the Hellboy comics, and I liked the or the two original movies with Ron Perlman. Of course. Mm-hmm. How did yeah. you uh, like the other one that came out recently? I the haven't Stranger watched Things it. Guy. I haven't watched it with uh, with the what Arbor. Guy? It was David Arbor. Arbor. Yeah, I have not watched it, but I've heard terrible things about it. Yep. <laughs> This one is giving low budget vibes. Eh? Yeah, it's, it's zero I, budget. This vibes. also is giving like he's hunting a serial killer. <laughs> like, I, zero like, budget. And yeah, the person has read the because I've read the Hellboy comics. Like he is supposed to be like a detective of the occult. Like that's supposed to be the whole thing. So right, I guess yeah. they're kind of like trying to stick to that because like the the Ron Perlman movies were action movies. Like yeah. he was, like he was an like action. Basically. Yeah, yeah, he was an action police officer. Which, I mean, I enjoyed, and some of the comic books are like that. Some of the comic books are like, it's straight-up action, it's Hellboy punching demons and, and all of that stuff. I, I think the issue with this is that they're not making Hellboy enough of a character. Yeah, yeah I think I saw him like three times in the opening 30 seconds, and it's his movie? What? And it was, yeah. what, Killing That Snake? And I'm saying, like, the other thing is he's not giving out, like, Hellboy one-liners or... Oh, no, he's, not, yeah. he's not doing the Hellboy stuff. And I think that's what's throwing the trailer off. Like, it's okay to have a low-budget, um, like, a smaller story where you're just like, okay, we want to take Hellboy and just put him on this detective. And also, the thing is, they also kind of ruined the, the Crooked Man, kind of, already, with the Crooked Man premise, because they're doing, like, generic horror things. I feel like if they were more interesting, if they did more interesting things with the horror, because if you read, like, the comic books, like, there'll they'll be really strange stuff happening, and that's why, because, like, the whole thing of Hellboy is that he's, like, he he's basically, like, an occult police officer. Mm. Like, you have to call like that him... Character, like the character in Invincible, right, that got killed by Omni-Man. Yes, that's, yes, that's that's basically that character is based off of Hellboy, I think. Yeah, but I like think that's yes, that's but I'm saying like the whole idea is that he's got to be like, all right, there's weird things happening here. We don't understand why, and we kind of got to call this guy who's going to investigate. And then it takes him into weird and wonderful places and areas. Like, of course, he goes into like like hellish looking realms and all of that stuff, and. Like, I think kind of that's why the Ron Perlman movies kind of drew people in because, like, things did get weird. He did fight weird-looking stuff. So it was kind of like, okay, I get why you call this guy with a giant red fist. Here, it just feels like you could have called anybody. 
and like Hellboy himself, he doesn't feel like a character. Like when he was supposed to give a one liner out, he can't. He gave the most generic one liner, and I'm just like, I don't think you guys have read these comic books or have like looked at this character in detail. And I think that's kind of hurting. Reading. And I think that's kind of hurting this trailer. It kind of feels like a fan fiction. Yeah. Video. Not anyway, even that's my, like um, that's my that's my that's my two cents. I'm done. I think the worst part is now that I've just watched uh, the Bagman, I don't see a difference. The only difference between the Bagman and this one is that um, Hellboy can actually kill the Bagman. Hmm. That's literally the only difference. That's the vibe I've seen. I got as well. Oh, dog. Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I was actually basically that's the literally the only difference. If you put, if you took this uh, Hellboy and put him in the Bagman, and you put the Bagman in in the the main character from the Bagman in in Hellboy one, it literally looks like the same movie. Just uh, one is a, a Hellboy is someone who could kill both the Bagman and the Crooked Man. Yeah. To me, the vibe I got from this, right, was, um, okay, number one, it's a generic, straightforward horror movie. That's what this feels like. He, this man is playing this role 100% straight, um, this Hellboy, so it doesn't feel like there's going to be anything funny about it. It's just a Blumhouse horror movie, and right. then it's going to end with him shooting the guy, and it's going to be like, oh, no, it turns out, no, this bad guy can be shot. Do you know what I mean? That's the vibe I got. Yeah, because Hellboy is a very snarky character. He's a very, yeah. like... He's very mm. like, but he he he's snarky in the sense that he's like dry snarky. Mm. Like yeah. he's not like he's not like he he's not like Deadpool where Deadpool is snarky, but it's like snarky on steroids and there's a lot of energy. He's kind of like that guy who'll be like, um, what's this? Like he'll shoot you and then he'll be like, oh man, I just got my boots dirty or something like that. Yeah. Like yeah. he do stuff like that. Yeah. This this guy like uh, like the actor is delivering the lines like it's a generic detective, yeah. and then on top of that like they're not really putting him in, and also like the black preacher and he, like he's a half, and he's like, oh, I swear for Lord and it's like oh okay we're doing that now all right, but um yeah I I just think that they missed the like from this trailer it's looking like they're missing the point of Hellboy. And also, it's looking like they're forgetting all of the other characters as well. Like, it kind of just looks like they mm. paired him with a generic woman who's just going to be there. And it's just like, yeah, no, he operates in a team. Like, it's a whole facility. Like, you're supposed to have, like, Abe Sapien and, and stuff like that. Like, I was looking around. for Abe. But, I mean, I look, I get it. It's low budget. I just think yeah, that, I and, that's not a, and that's not a bad idea. I just think that they're missing the point of Hellboy. Like, right. I think that they're not getting, they're not nailing Hellboy, and that's what's hurting this trailer. Mm, yeah, this trailer just, like I I'm going to repeat my point again. It just felt like a generic horror movie. If if you just put me in there instead of Hellboy, and I'm the detective, that's how it would have felt. It, it yeah. felt like that. Okay, um, Rob? This is just, this is the Conjuring um, on special, basically. Cheap conjuring, and it's not gonna uh -oh. make conjuring money. Um, this is the okay. conjuring Yako boxer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, the conjuring so your shop right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, you save, save, not shop right, bro. You save. <laughs> um, I do believe this thing was going to make. Um, give me one second. I just want to actually find out what the actual conjuring box office was. It was 300. Okay, it's not doing that. Okay, I'm going to have this one for 80 million plus. How much did the yeah. first Hellboy make? Do you know? Um, I'll tell you now. Though I feel like it's not the same audience, so I feel like it's not even fair to check. Um, okay, mm, now the, it's... The, okay. the Harbor one made 55. Um, 2014. Um, oh, 2004. Jeez, how old are we? Uh, <laughs> 99 million so i might be generous but Dude, yeah we are we know carabo when she was just a spoiled brat doing drugs and cocaine not when yeah. she was running as that's how old we are exactly <laughs> but anyway my thoughts like yeah. i said for me this feels like a fan fiction doesn't seem like it just seems like someone who's really passionate about Hellboy tried to do their own film and got lucky enough 
to get it uh, greenlit. I don't think so, though. I don't think so, because if it was a fan, he would have... If he couldn't include Abe Sapien because of special effects and stuff, he would have made him snarkier, as Park said. And also, Mm. I feel like there would be a mention of Abe Sapien. This... It feels like it's a fan film for a person who's not a fan of Hellboy. Like that's the, that's what I'm that's what I'm getting. Because also so, like oh, okay, I get you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because also there was like a line where he's like, "Let's rattlesnake," and I'm like, Hellboy wouldn't say that. Yeah, no. Um. Okay. Box Wait, if the originals made like a hundred mil, nah, then this is gonna make like. Minus 30. Because <laughs> the, the originals are a cult classic at least. Like, exactly. That That's what one, I'm thinking. I like, even that they second one, more. people may... Like, even that second one, even though people like it less, like, the it still has movie. a lot of... Yeah, it still has a lot of defenders. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't right, see I, I, anybody defending this one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, no. uh, you said minus 30, right? Uh, Zooks, yeah. uh, Buckmeister? I said minus 40 somewhere there. Okay, uh, Rob? Uh, I said 80 plus. 80 plus. Hey, you are generous, eh? Yeah. I'm very generous. Ah, yeah, yeah. I think it's going to make, like, minus 20, bro. No, minus. Hellboy is a recognized name, and, like, people are sour off of Arbor, and, like, people have been saying, I want a Hellboy detective story. So I can see the premise pulling some people in, but, like, I, the trailer will turn a lot of people off, I think. It yeah. probably might have worked as an animated film, maybe. Yeah. That's there is actually so there is actually a really good Hellboy animated film. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? But let me just get your number again there, um, Buck. You I said? said about minus 40. Okay, minus 40. And Kutsu, your number? Minus 20. All righty. Minus 40, minus 20. All righty, then. All right. Uh, what's next, Rob? I think we're almost there. Yeah, I've got two more. Oh, no, three more. Uh, yeah, these, these three. Yeah, this is number eight now. Okay, so we're on Lee. I enjoyed this. this uh, and training. the Oscar goes mm-hmm. to... Well, that's what people are hoping. All right, so this one uh, stars Kate Winslet, has Marion Cortillard, uh, has Andy Sandberg. And I was like, Andy so Sandberg random. is doing a serious film? Like Mr. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Mr. Saturday Night Live? I was surprised hey, to see him in this I know one, him but... as Mr. I know him as, as the dude from Lonely Island. Yeah. Lonely Island, that's what I was trying to remember. Do the creep. Ooh. And I kiss it my pants. <laughs> so it seems and like I threw it's... it on the ground. Like that's how I know him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it seems like it's uh, based on a true story because it says uh, Lee Miller goes from a career as a model to enlisting as a photographer to chronicle the events of World War II for Vogue magazine. Um, yeah, so. Like I said, Kate Winslet, Marion Cortillard, uh, Andy Sandberg. And has a running time of 117 minutes. I don't know, Andy Sandberg in this trailer, it feels like he's about to say, um, what's this, like a boss. Like, I feel like he's about to... <laughs> like, he's he's about to do some some Jake some, stuff. Some song, song parody. Yeah, like, it feels like he's about to break out. Like, I've, I'm, I'm, I've, I've, like... I've seen him like when he did that movie with Andy, um, Sa- um you know, what's and not Andy Samberg, um, what's what's his name? <laughs> um, Jesus, he did the movie with Chris Rock and them grown ups. Um, oh, Adam Sandler, Adam Sandler, there we go. Oh, that movie, oh, yes, yeah, like people were saying that he was giving a lot more range than we normally see him, but this is a very, this is a, I mean, it might work. It might work for him. This is a big, big leap, I guess. So it could work. But it's just hard to get over the Andy Samberg that I know in my head. Uh, as for the trailer itself, I mean, you know, I'm kind of over World War II, uh, like, biopics and reinterpretations, and uh, this is World War II again. Like, there's a lot of World War II movies. Does uh, it feel like Oscar Bates? Oscar Bates? Mm. It, no, it feels like it's it's more sincere than that. It feels like somebody does want to tell this story. But some of the delivery for me was a little bit weird from some of the actors. Like, 
like when they're having that whole thing about oh you are like this and you are like that and you're like that i was like bro you're not really delivering these lines convincingly to me yeah, and then weird. also like that weird scene where they was like oh you didn't print it why didn't you print it how does how does she get over this how does she get over this like that kind of felt i got this i got what the what the scene was doing and i mean again it's a trailer i need to probably see it in context but it just kind of felt weird like the other lady was just kind of just nodding her head and shaking and trying to agree with everything that kate winslet was saying and uh i don't know it just felt kind of like i'm not seeing what the I, i'm i'm not getting it i'm not getting what this scene is supposed to convey but other than that yeah it looks like it's it looks like it's a sincere attempt at trying to tell uh something based on a true story which we know it means they're gonna remix i don't know how many events like she's yeah. gonna block she's gonna block bullets with cameras for like she's gonna block <laughs> the, the bullets with a camera for all we know but she blocked the bomb dog didn't you see that one yeah. she bombed the camera like she's gonna her, so she's and... gonna ke- she's gonna kept her a lot of photos without film and they're gonna be po- they're gonna print it for some reason yeah <laughs> she might even she might even defeat hitler ka ka snap we don't know <laughs> glorious style yeah what do you think mm-hmm. rob um i think oh sorry my box office prediction oh, yeah. uh kate winslet I don't know. Andy Samberg is not pulling like that. Marion Cotillard is not pulling like that. But like, uh, I don't know. It's a World War Two. There's going to be a lot of old. And there's the the female. Oh, that might hurt it. I don't know. But there's definitely female empowerment vibe things where it's like, how dare a man tell me to do one, two, three, four, five? But I maybe I can see it. Maybe three. Maybe two hundred plus. Yeah, maybe two hundred plus. Two hundred plus. All right. Oh uh, wait, Zuko, did you give your box office no. prediction? I didn't even start. I didn't even give my review. Oh, oh okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Let's go with you first then. Okay. Um, it looks good. Um, it probably will just have um the problem of of uh, whitewashing some stuff and making the person look better than they actually were. Hmm. But um, seems like it's it, actually seems like it's actually also giving some white savior tropes there with the girl and her. Well, it's the like... whites saving the whites, so I don't think it counts. Mm-hmm, yeah, okay. fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, it's a uh, it's cauliflower and cauliflower crime. So. Whoa. Okay, please continue. The views <laughs> of. <laughs> the views expressed. <laughs> please continue, bro. Uh, so um it looks good um it it hits all the 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 issues of the past oh she's a woman she can't do this uh uh it was interesting to know that vogue was actually shooting war stuff i did not know that i just thought vogue was fashion so Same that here. was pretty cool mm. so that was a interesting something to learn about um It also looks like a an eat pray love but at war cuz she went there cuz she wanted to do something special with important with her life and like dude why are you going to war? <laughs> like just go look after orphans or something that's way easier to find, to find purpose there than going to war but uh besides that um it looks it looks like your standard person who who are shallow and then goes and discover something deep and now like when the like when the, her photos were published and then she cuts them because she's thinking it's pointless it's because she came from the shallow view and she thought and now she thinks everything she she does is important or she just it's her way of trying to give the voiceless a voice and when she sees it's not happening she loses it type of thing so Yeah, it, it it looks like it'll hit the the right spots and Kate Winslet could could act with a bowl of milk and make it look like the most interesting thing ever. So, I think I would enjoy it. Like I always say like okay. always with these type of movies, they always they'll make the person bad in like one thing, you know. Like ooh, she swears too much and then in the journey then they don't swear as much type of thing. They don't they don't 
show them as 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 full people. Yeah, I mean, like Oppenheimer kind of did the same thing because people were coming out after Oppenheimer and they were just like, "That's not who Oppenheimer was." Like they tried to pretty him up for for the movies and everything because like some of the experiments that he ran were like legitimately heinous. So yeah, I, mm. but I uh, I think maybe that might not happen here because it is somebody documenting what's going on. Maybe they yeah. maybe when we find out the true story, it'll be like they played a part in like the propaganda wars, maybe, sort of. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, we saying. look at because like the way we look at World War Two. Sorry, I'll get off of this just now. It's like the way we look at World War Two. Like I get that Hitler was the bad guy, but it's not like everybody involved were good guys either. Mm. That part. Yeah, okay, so Zooks, what do you, in, uh, how much do you think it's going to make? I just, I, I just hope it doesn't um, whitewash her to, like, show her being a human being, you know, like, show her, like, I want to show the people what's really going on in war, and then show her also wanting to quit, you know, crying, and then show someone giving her the courage, to, you know, like, a hum- like, as you a human being, you're going through things, and sometimes you are passionate about that thing, but it's hard. And then you get encouragement from somewhere and strength from somewhere type of thing. Don't just make it like, oh, oh you know, it's not Naruto where you're just going to have the power of friendship and the power of perseverance. <laughs> you are my photographer. <laughs> uh, Hitler, I will shoot you. I will flash you to death. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is gonna do. I think this is gonna do well. The trailer was really good. Um, uh, it uh, it portrayed the the character nicely, you know, and it, the story was well shown out. I'll give it a two hundred plus. Okay, Rob. Cool. After all that, okay, cool. Um, Hitler was Prada. I think. Is a what? <laughs> That's the vibe I got. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, I think personally, I think um, <laughs> what the hell, bro? You know, <laughs> devil is Prada, Hitler is Prada. No, we do. But he's not even in this though. <laughs> oh my god! So like, um, is he going to be seducing Kate Winslet to the dark side? <laughs> I wish. I think that would be a better story. Like. Like Jojo Rabbit vibes, but um, in my opinion, um, I think this. I think you guys are right with one thing. This, this, the, the, the lines they picked felt generic. It felt like a very. I want to say I don't want to use the word corny, but at the same time, I, it felt corny. Some of these one-liners felt so corny, but at the same time, this movie is visually stunning. The cinematography, yeah. every single shot is on fire. That's what really got my attention. When they started talking, I got sad. But when I was looking at the pictures, I was like, wow. Um, so that's what that's what really got me going. And if you, I looked up this the director, the name is Ellen Kraus. Kuras, yep. sorry, my bad. Um, and she's a cinematographer. So it makes sense. So oh, okay. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that stood out to me. But the actual, I feel like the, the words that came out of their mouths is going to turn people off. Like, I can just see a lot of energy being sucked out of the room because of it. So, in my, and also just looking at Annie Sandberg, um, I was like, what's happening right now? So, in my opinion, I think it's going to lose a bunch of money. Um, I'm putting it at, what did I write here? Um, I'm going to put it at minus 50 million. Wow. You yeah. mm. Okay. Well, Andy was better than some of the other people in the trailer. Oh no, I'm not agree. I'm not saying he did a bad job. I'm just saying the line, the line play, and just seeing Andy Sandberg, people are going to be confused, in my opinion. And I think those the excitement will get sucked out the room. So yeah, um, my all right. So I also think it's visually stunning. That's the thing that really caught my attention. Uh, you can tell that they took some ideas from Saving Private Ryan uh, from a visual standpoint. Eighteen fourteen, yeah. Um, 1914, sorry. Yeah, and uh, I'm a huge Kate Winslet fan. I think you guys already know this. I've never really seen her in anything, and I felt like she didn't deliver. Uh, even if the movie sucked, she didn't suck in it. Um, so I have a feeling that it would, it might work, 
but it's going to be those movies that will never really blow up. It's just going to be those movies that people appreciate. Like it's an artist's, um, an artistic film, but it's not really meant to be like a huge uh, film that everybody's going to go and love and watch over and over again and, and becomes a timeless classic like Titanic or something. I think it's just mm. going to be one of those movies that uh, people are, well, the artists thing is, we are also have so it. many World War Two movies. Like it's a lot. Yeah, so it's, it might get buried in that entire archive of World War movies. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, my thoughts might make around one hundred and twenty, one hundred and twenty plus. Sorry, one hundred and twenty minus at the box office. All right, and just so to me- give that little thing. It only it the highest trailer only got eight hundred sixty six views, eight hundred sixty six thousand views. Ah, oh, that would be like eight hundred and sixty six. I was like, yeah, that'll be I weird. retract those my are, statement. Those are <laughs> our <laughs> numbers. <laughs> those are our numbers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not Winslet numbers. Yeah. But anyway, okay. now for probably the worst movie of the day, Panda Bear in Africa. Oh, yeah, but God. don't forget that we we'll still have to do Transformers, but okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay, that's not the worst. This is the worst. Ooh. Just look at that picture, dog. This was giving a Big Trip 3 vibe. Yeah, man. Big Trip 3. This is. Big it actually felt like Big Trip 3. I feel like, you know, when someone is copying your homework? Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Like the premise, actually... the premise shot itself in the foot. That's how like yeah. dumb this trailer was. It was like, oh, I've captured your friend. Like, first off, pandas and dragons. In a yeah, zoo? like wasn't it wasn't big tri- 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 trip tri- about a guy also uh, like saving a First dragon? Of all, how are you capturing a dragon? Like, yeah. who are you to capture a dragon? Like, 100%. that already threw me off. But no, and I'm I, like, I, the I, dragon I... can fly. Like, none of you can fly. Like, like the dragon can just be like, okay, I'm out, and just leave. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the dragon can burp, and all of you are dead. And then there's a That's monkey, and bread. then there's like Captain Jack Sparrow monkey style, and he's like, you have to earn your keep, and it's like, also, what is the delivery? Like, when the voice actors don't care, it just makes the animation look that much worse. Yeah, because yeah. it seems like the rent is due here, eh? How no, but I'm well, saying, like, the rent is due, but they thing. are just phoning it in. Like, it just feels like the textures lose 10% in quality because of the terrible voice acting. As directed by two guys. Huh. Okay. I think that guy was trying to be the the wise owl, and he, it just came off as, "What are you trying to do? <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? You ain't you that deep." <laughs> right. Um. Okay. So, what do you guys think, uh, Rob? What are your thoughts? Okay. Um... Oh, sorry. I'll give my box office quick, quick. Okay. Five million minus. Okay. Zoops. Uh, minus 15. I'm being generous. It's probably a minus 10, but I'll give it a minus 15 for gener- for hopefulness. Ooh. Okay. Um, um, Rob? Okay, cool. I'll go first. Um, it didn't even get, it didn't even break 200,000 views. So, yeah, I've got 2 million. I thought everything looked cheap, shockingly cheap. There are actually one or two jokes that actually made me laugh. So I feel like the cinema. Which one? Um, what was the one joke about? The- but the the cub make, talking about uh hamsters. I think that no. I oh yes, it, the hamster one was hilarious. The tea one and the, the hamster one. I thought those were actually not laugh out loud, but it made me smile. So I was like, you know what? That actually did something to me. As opposed oh, there was to- the the hippo the hippo scene as well. We were saving yeah. the hippo. Yeah. The frog yeah. Thing. Mm. Yeah, that was okay. I watched it like Sub Zero with ice in my veins. <laughs> but still, that's not going to do anything for anyone. I agree. So mine is minus two million. Could so you, my man? Oh man! Yeah, no. I think the animation space is really getting worse and worse uh, each time we're, we're we're looking at these trailers. It's crazy. I mean, it was so yeah. bad that last time we didn't even we didn't even comment about that spider detective one. Yeah. Um, what was the point? That spider detective one was so creepy and weird. Like, what the hell is going on? What's wrong with you when you're like, yeah, spiders. Mm. 
Yeah, I think this might be. Also, the thing is, they made everybody spiders, and I'm just like, there's no variety here. Like, it just looks like a bunch of weird spindly legs, like spinning around. Yeah, someone. Someone creepy. Someone was across the Spider Verse and was like, "Yeah, let's actually make them spiders instead. Real spiders." No, I'm saying like, if you had the main character as a spider and then you juxtaposed him with something else. That would be better, but it's just like a bunch of spiders. To, like, even A Bug's Life had other bugs. <laughs> it actually made 2.2 million. I can't believe it. What? The, the, <laughs> oh. Yeah, Inspector Sun. Well, that's probably Ronnie Chiang. Ronnie Chiang probably made an Instagram post and then those people went to go watch it. Yeah. Yeah, probably, but... <laughs> yeah, because I, I realize that's part of the contract nowadays. Like, if you're a celebrity, you need to have a social media thing and you have to push the movie. It's crazy. But anyway, yeah, I think it's, it's going to so make sad. minus two uh, million. Some, someone got... Imagine someone got a, a, a TV role on Kazlam or whatever because they have more social media followers than you where now who went to acting school and knows what to do or not to deliver. I was like, ah, chief, you gotta, you gotta hustle. You gotta get on there and act on the reels and the things, and and get the people interested in you. The yep. game is different now. Nah, yeah. but dude, like, I'm qualified for this ish. At least, like, if you give me the chance, I'll, I'll build an audience. But I, mm-hmm. I get you. But like, come on, I can build an audience. If I'm on Komora, I can build an audience. If I'm on Scheme Sam, I can build an audience. Like, I don't even see this on Netflix. Uh, being on Netflix, I see it being on like Showmax or something or DSTV yeah. Catch Up. Free on YouTube, Chief. <laughs> this is on ETV. <laughs> this is on ETV. After the insurance commercials. Not even box office main time. And dog, mm. it's in the afternoon. Like, <laughs> 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Outsurance commercial and then... <laughs> we just see, yeah, we just see Lillian Dube. She's saying that you must get your affairs in order. Then Panda Bear Africa. That's, that's, yes. This is this one, Dube. Uh, yes. Panda yes. Bear in Africa is coming to theaters on the 27th of September. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so it's everybody, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So the last one of the night oh, wait, or no, the what's day. What's your number? What's your number? Oh, I said minus two million. All right, cool. So you're with me. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Transformers. Now I feel like I gave it like I, I feel like I gave it too high. Because <laughs> said minus fifteen, chief. I'm yeah, like no, on one planet. That's wild, dude. I, I was just it still. Uh, anyway, you know what? I'm in a good mood. Let's leave it at minus fifteen. <laughs> All right, Transformers one, uh, starring Chris Hemsworth as Optimus Prime. Brian Terry Henry as uh, Megatron, Scarlett Johansson, Kigel Michael Key, Steve Buscemi, Lawrence Fishburne, and John Hamm. So basically, this is the origin story. It says that an origin story set on the planet Cybertron centering around the history of the Transformers race and the relationship between the two workers named Orion Pax and D-16, going from brothers in arms to arch enemies as Optimus Prime and Megatron. It has a running time of 104 minutes, and it is directed by Josh Cooley with music by Brian Tyler. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm not the biggest Transformers fan, but I like all the Transformers media I've consumed, like outside of the Michael Bay stuff as well, which you just you. But um, yeah, with, with like with that stuff, I'm used to hearing the voice of Peter Cullen. Mm-hmm. So seeing what. Um, I don't think there's ever been... Have there ever been other voices? I'm sure they have. Yeah. But it's just Peter Cullen mm. is just the most iconic. Yeah, he's like the Kevin Conroy of Batman type thing. Peter Cullen. Yeah, with, with uh, Optimus Prime. Like, yeah, I, my name is Optimus Prime. Like, that's that's kind of how I know this character. So seeing what they're doing with um, with Chris Hemsworth, sometimes it feels like he's doing a bit Thor-isms in here yes like with the voice work but i say i i don't know if it's bad or if it's just me having a bias for P- for peter cullen because i don't think it's terrible mm. i don't think it's like unwatchable and i think also brian tyree henry like he's not doing P- like frank welker or yeah, hugo right. weaving he's, right. he's not doing that type of like gruff menacing voice thing it's kind of like they feel like dude bros yeah. Who are supposed to go to Arch Enemy? So maybe that's the the vibe that they're going for here, I guess. 
But I don't know if it fits. Yeah, but I'm saying I don't know if it fits those two characters. Like when they start off as just like regular dude bros, and like you know, like they do sound like like Optimus. Like Optimus Prime was like Optimus Prime was the cheeky one, and Megatron was the one keeping him in line. Like I don't know about that characterization, but it it does look good. Um, It makes sense though, Buck, because remember. How someone starts and how they end is not always uh, the same. Yeah, but I'm saying, so... like, the thing is with Orion Pax, like, part of the, from the little lore that I know. Oh, okay. I hope he comes back. Well, anyway, with Orion Pax, part of the, the little lore that I know is that he was kind of a church mouse who was forced into greatness. Yeah. Like, he he was just a guy who was in the library and then things happened to him and he had to become Optimus Prime. Okay, I'll... I'll tell Zuko now. Oh, sorry there, Zooks. I was just saying, like, I get what you're saying about where you start and where you finish, but, like, Orion Pax, from how I know the lore, he kind of started off as a little bit of, like, a church mouse. He was, like, a Mm. librarian who got thrown into a situation where he had to become Optimus Prime. And, like, yeah, and, like, the the reason why him and, um, like, they do philosophize about, like, the state of Transformers, him and Megatron, but like they were like it was because Megatron was in like the mines. That's why he's so radicalized. Whereas um, Optimus Prime was like in he had his head at, in books as Orion Pax. So that's why he's oh, more okay. peace orientated or whatever the case is. So that was supposed to be the from what I know. I mean, somebody can comment on if if you're at this point in the video. First off, Chief, you are strong, but. <laughs> If, like, yeah, you can comment down below and tell me if I'm wrong. But that's kind of how I know them. So I think this yeah. is supposed to be a different take. The reason why I think it's clashing is because they're saying it's an origin story. So if I'm supposed to be seeing Orion Pax and now he's this brash, I can transform something. It, 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 it's like, okay. But, you know, I, I don't know if it's bad. I just don't know if it's bad or if it's my bias. I yeah, think like, they're who's doing the, like, okay. What's the, who's the target market? That's my question. Like, if it's supposed to be Transformers fans, I don't know if you're going to get them with this. And if it's supposed to be kids, I don't really know if you're going to get them with this either. Like, no, that's I, what feel like I feel like you would go to Peter Cullen to, to, to pull in that crowd since he can still do it. Or you get, a, you get a, somebody who can approximate, not Peter Cullen directly, but just give that Peter Cullen vibe with, with right. Optimus. Yeah. Anyway, uh, box office, mm, it's animated and it's got a lot of names. I can maybe see 400 million plus, maybe. And it's also Transformers. Transformers makes money, so I can see 400 million plus. Transformers makes money no matter how crap the movie is. It's yeah. It's like, what the hell? No, is except for thing... Transformers 5, because Transformers 5 did not perform well. Is it? Yeah. That was the probably fifth the one. one. The fifth one did not perform too well. Is it is it the Beast Wars one? No, not Beast Wars. I'm talking about the Michael Bay movies, where um with the sword. Oh, with uh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, where, where basically Mark Wahlberg gets a sword, and and all of that stuff, and Optimus like Prime disappears for two. No, no, no I'm I not talking know about what the was happening there, bro. I'm talking about the um, basically what was it? it? Yeah, they had Merlin and the and like one one like the the girl was a descendant of Merlin and all of that stuff. Oh wow, I I know I watched it, but I don't remember. And like, also, what's her face? Like they had a they had a small girl. Yeah, I fight like a girl. Yeah, I fight like a girl or whatever. What was her name? Yeah, no. Uh... Yeah. It was Transformers 5. That one did not do too well. Oh, where, where, here's how you know it. Where Bumblebee and, and Optimus fight enough for the trailer. There we go. Yeah. All right. Um, Zooks? Yeah, I'm agreeing with Buck. Um, the whole Optimus being the brash and uh, Megatron being the calm one was weird. And then both of them. Like, it doesn't, like, the reason X-Men works is because Charles grew up in a certain way, and um, Magneto grew up in a certain way. So the reason why they might have the same goal, but they have different ways of getting to it, it makes sense. 
here they're both working the same way. They 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 live in the same place. They work at the same area. So why are their views so diametrically opposed? That could be that's that would have to be very well explained for it to make sense because I, I don't get it. But otherwise, it 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 looked it looked fun. It looked like it was all, all right, you know. Um. The them getting their powers, that was a weird one. Like you go to this old man, you get your powers, and then he just disappears. <laughs> that was it. Like, I mean, is he like the guru of this universe? What's going on? Like, but it felt so weird. But there's a lot of stuff said, like that. There's kind of a lot of stuff like that in Transformers lore, from what I know. Like there's a lot of you go into a cave and then magical things can happen to you. But I think it was kind of not explained in this yeah, trailer. That, that, Which I mean, I'm it's thinking, a trailer, you know, so. Yeah, but so like, yeah. I, I'm not gonna like bash them over it because I'm sure maybe in the movie they'll explain it better. But it just felt like they said, uh, Cam, Rob, Zuko, you are the Power Rangers. Bye. Like, wait, what, what are we supposed to do? How do we activate the Power Rangers stuff? Yeah, yeah. Also, I thought it felt the like they just, gave the... You, they just gave you the power and they didn't give you the manual, they didn't give you no training, they didn't even yeah, do a simple explanation of what you needed to do. Uh, but okay. otherwise, it it looks okay. Um, I like the fact that Crims, uh, Chris Hemsworth didn't try to to Peter Cullen too much. He just tried to be himself. He did get bassier at the end, but he didn't try to Cullen it. So because you're not well, going to that, that roll out line does kind of sound like Cullen though. No, but I think didn't. that delivery wasn't the strongest. That's what I was about to say. Like when, yeah, when he was supposed but, to say roll out, I, I I think maybe it's the point of the scene is that yeah, you know, it is. Prime it is. is still finding his voice. But I think it's just a weird way to cut the trailer because it's just like roll out is like one of it's like I it's like I am vengeance, I am the knight, I am Batman. It's like one of those most Avengers assemble. Yeah, it's, it's it's like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Optimus Prime saying Autobots roll out is like one of the most iconic. It's the most iconic line in that franchise. So mm. I think cutting to it on Optimus being awkward, I don't know if that's a good way to sell the trailer. I think I would have just cut it out and just had it in the movie play out regularly. But that's just me. And also, if you know if you're gonna have it like that, have him have him have a weak one and then have him have a strong one. Yeah, and that probably would have balanced. That, that it out, would yeah. rather show his growth. That would that would be a better way yeah. to show his growth. I guess like, I guess maybe it's like that thing with Simba roaring when he's a kid and the hyenas laughing at him and at the end after fighting Scar, he roars as an adult and it's a proper roar. Maybe he's going to do a proper rollout uh, in the climax. I don't know. Yeah, but we're just saying for the trailer for it to to hype you up. Yeah. Yeah. Get the, get the first one in, the weak one, and then get the strong one in. Then you're like, oh, yeah, baby Optimus. But when you just do the weak one, you're just left with the weak one. You know, it doesn't mm. give you that fire. But um, but in general the trailer looked decent. Um, it it looked alright. It it looked like it'll make money. Okay. From from the trailer, so I'll give it a a three fifty plus. No, three hundred plus. Sorry. Hey guys, it's it's sad that none of us are so enthused that we're giving these things like seven, eight, nine, a billion. Mm-mm, I don't think. Look, if it was Cullen, maybe because that voice in Tang. Yeah. I just Optimus, meant all the films that we've covered today. Sometimes when Optimus is speaking, Tang, <laughs> like, what, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, Rob, uh, what do you think? Um, well, I was going to say, um, you're right, there, there aren't that many big numbers, but to be fair, I think we're forgetting theaters are in trouble right now. So, you know what I mean? There's a reason why we're not saying you Metro and Mr. Kinnacle, because theaters right. are in trouble. So, you know, we're not going to get multiple billion dollar movies. Not going to happen. And to be fair, they shouldn't actually be what the normal, if you actually think about it. Only superhero movies break that barrier. I mm-hmm. mean, normal movies don't normally do that. And Which it's is also like, been to, and it's also been to their detriment because the thing is, is that executives have gotten a big head about these billion dollar movies, so they yeah. just start forgetting to write, they start forgetting to direct, and they're just like, yeah, we can do whatever and make a billion, and then they find out the hard way, 
no, you can't. <laughs> that is true. And also, yeah. they also increase the standard of movies. So now, if I work as, as a cinematographer in a superhero movie, then I work in a smaller movie, I'm going to expect the same paycheck or a similar paycheck. Do you know what I mean? If I'm the gaffer. Yeah. Then, do, you guys, do you guys think that the MCU has really messed up the status quo of movies? Mm-mm. I yes. think executives I think executives didn't learn the lessons they were supposed to and I think they've done cuz it's just a repeating thing in Hollywood like the MCU is just the latest iteration but they did this with YA novels when Harry Potter was kicking around they right. did this they, they they like and we can go as far as back as Ben Hur and people were trying to do Ben Hur all over again like the thing is Hollywood as a machine it always just like let me repeat what works and the thing is, they forget the reason why it worked in the first place, and they just keep churning it out anyway. Like, action mm-hmm. movies did the same thing, westerns did the same thing. I just think the MCU is the latest iteration of that. And if superheroes fall off, which I don't think they will, something else will come in and everybody will start just doing that. Okay, I slightly disagree. I agree and disagree, because yes, you're right, something else will take its place. But you have to remember the standard money that's coming in right now this may not happen again because um, you have to remember like the age of Ben-Hur. There was a time when movies used to be expensive before. The age of Ben-Hur, Lawrence of Arabia, I think even Cleopatra, I think Cleopatra was a movie at that time um, where these movies used to cost the money, the Marvel money, right? And then nothing really took its place. Um, Westerns were big, but they were never Lawrence of Arabia big. So they never made, so in studios never did that again until recently. And now we're kind of stuck with this expensiveness that kind of because you have to think Disney, right? I don't know if you guys remember this, but this was years ago. Um, Disney tried to fight the movie company, um, the movie studios, not studios, theaters. There we go. Um, tried to fight them to be like, from now on, we're this, these are what we want from now on because you can see right. how movies are making money. So we want X percentage of the revenue and uh-huh. we want more theaters. And then I think the movie theaters had to like team up and be like, oh, no, you don't. Do you know what I mean? So I think there was like a balance that was met there, but it doesn't matter because now the new standard is so high. And now remember, streaming has destroyed the DVD market. So now that's gone. And Disney is forcing prices up, even though they even they can't match it now. That's permanent. So I think what's going to happen, or rather logically what should happen, even though I don't want it to happen, is there'll probably be a movie crash, a market crash in the movie theaters. We're going to lose a lot more theaters, a lot more bad things will happen, and then they'll probably do a reset. Um, mm. I think that's what's going to happen in the future. But I'm saying, I feel like that crash is just coming from the way, like, it's been, it's been a long time coming, is what I'm saying. I just yeah. feel like Hollywood in general, they have not changed their MO for years and years on end. Like something successful happens. Perfect example, right? Matrix comes out, and now every movie has a slow motion scene. So mm-hmm. it's 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 just kind of I feel like because of it became a conveyor belt or whatever the case is. Like, and then now on top of the expensiveness that you're mentioning, like they're not doing anything to like kind of earn the money. Like they're not doing anything to put butts in seats. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah. So I can definitely see like uh, a whole like, yeah, like it's gonna like it's gonna be bad for a while. Like movies are gonna maybe go away. Maybe streaming will become consolidated, and then yeah, boom, and then theater comes back somehow. Yeah, I can see that happening. Oh, yeah, the Highlanders, the the Highlander of um these streaming companies is already happening. I mean, you see now what's it Hulu and some of these other ones, these American ones are like. Um, guys, we're just going to put a few ads back in. And it's like, okay, but then why am I here then? I thought the whole idea was no ads. Now you're worse than mm. cable. Then now you're worse than DSTV now. Um, a lot of these things are happening. As you're saying, actually, they're happening already. But just to give you an idea, just like you said, like the Matrix was so big, right, that people started copying the Matrix, which was a huge thing. Yeah. Now, just remember, the mega beast that was the Matrix, 462 million. That's a failure today. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> That's a box office yeah. fail today. That's well, like, and, uh, I mean, it's relative to the budget, though. It's relative to the budget. Budget was $63 million. 
No, I mean, then it, I mean, it doesn't look impressive because the uh, MCU has trained us to think that movies should make a billion. Yeah, but yeah. like, yeah, I yeah. think that's that's the thing. That's like, my it, point. We've been uh, trained, and now the studios. Oh, Indiana Jones cost two hundred million. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why? You know, there was a mad. point. There was a point where when movies made twenty million, it was like a huge success. For yes, you remember those days. The good old mm-hmm. days. That's how old we are. Guys. Ah, but that's when that's when that's when you could take five rand chappies and you can like I mean five rand and you can go <laughs> buy out the whole garage. Yeah. That's true. Right. Like your uh, parents would give you yeah. ten bucks and you'd just be like, Why are you giving me so much money? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that's the tangent. Let me actually talk about the movie, which I haven't done yet. <laughs> okay. I, mm. I'm actually genuinely excited. I think there's hope for this movie. Um mm. Because to me, it gave me potential. Um, what's his name now? Black Panther, My- Michael B. Jordan. What's his character again? Killmonger. Killmonger vibes. There we go. I'm like, oof. If they if they do it right, this could give us Killmonger 2.0 vibes. I feel like yeah. the the market is, would want something like that, especially if they somehow manage to make it intelligent without having to go too dark. Obviously. Um, mm-hmm. This has the potential to be fantastic. I think it it has so much potential. Um, and just so you guys know, um, 14 million views um, in the trailers. So, you know, it's got positive energy. Um, so it's definitely not going to be under 100 million. I don't see that happening. Um, so mm. I'm going to give it a positive plus 450 million just to separate myself. So I'm going to give it a positive. So me and Zuko one. did plus 300, right? Um, yeah. I've got here. Yeah. Okay, no, I've got minus four hundred for Buckmeister, so plus three hundred. Oh, mm. oh, are you gonna keep it or change it? Let me say plus four hundred. I'll say plus four hundred. Ah, okay, so plus because 400. it's a Transformers. Like Transformers as a brand is still like it's still strong-ish. Like well, the merchandise it's, still it's, sells. It's definitely giving a Hasbro a lot of money. Um, and like people like love movie. Optimus Prime and Megatron, so like getting to see oh. the origin of that or what, or yeah. the version of this one is gonna, and it's Bumble gonna, Bumble. yeah. But I'm going to say it is based entirely on word of mouth. I think if it relies on the IP in itself, it won't break 200. I think if 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 it turns out that it actually does give a positive Killmonger vibe with uh, Megatron having like we like. You almost understand Megatron more than you understand um, Optimus, which a lot of writers like to do nowadays with a lot of their writing and their yeah, But I feel like that's also kind of lazy. Awesome. I feel like that's it's very really lazy. Awesome. Yeah, it's giving Mufasa vibes, yes. I think if they do that, yeah, they win on that. It's like, yeah, because yeah. when you look at Mufasa, like Scar is actually a prince of a... Predator of lions, like no, but like that—that like that is just a travesty cup. upon the source material. <laughs> Good God, yeah. it makes, it makes no sense, sense, though. Because people yeah. in the comments were saying, "Yeah, then that means that Scar was right." Like, yeah, <laughs> but, like, going back to this. Hey, dog, uh, we're never going to say God is evil. Yeah, but yeah, going back. Um, I feel like Scarlet. Johans is actually sidelined in this thing. Maybe it's because maybe her character is not is not as iconic as Optimus, uh, Megatron, or Bumblebee. Oh, but yes, I, just I was like, like, why is she I, there? Yeah, yeah, I feel like why is she there? Like her role could have been played by anybody else. Like anybody could have. Played her, they wanted to but, yeah, but I give it you know, going back to this. What? Yeah, look, the action. Some of the action sequences look decent. Mm-hmm. Um. That whole thing that you guys were talking about now, it's been done to death. I mean, I think you and I, Rob, were talking last week, we were using Moses and Ramesses as an example in the prisons of Egypt, that we've seen it before, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so maybe maybe the Transformers franchise should just take a rest because I, th- I don't think they're going to make the money that they assume that they're going to make. Lego Batman made like over a billion, uh, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But that was good yeah, story and word like of mouth. Movie. Remember, that was word of yes. mouth. Yes. Yes. And I have uh, seen this, some uh, marketing for Transformers. Sorry, I was going to say, I've seen some marketing for this. So that's a positive sign. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to make a billion, but I think it might make 500, okay, maybe maybe around 600 minus. 
I think the Transformers fans are also loyalists. Like, they don't want this thing to go away. So I think they'll try and support <laughs> it anyway. And also, it's not... They're not Michael Baying. Like, this does feel like some OG... Like, they're trying to do... They're trying to take OG Transformers and put a twist on it. Yes. So I think for that alone, people are going to be like, oh my god, let me let me give this a shot. But, but OG, after, you mean the, the 1980s yeah, uh, animated 1980s G1 film, right? animated yeah yeah basically that's right. what they're gonna try and do but like then after that initial shock or the, whatever then it's up to word of mouth and the actual quality of the film because designs won't save it there's been other Transformers series that have come out like there was one on Netflix and Transformers fans did not like it even though it did all the G1 classic stuff so Mm-hmm. Okay. I think the John Cena one didn't even make money. What is it called again? Bumblebee or something? Bumblebee. Did it make? I'll tell you now. Four hundred and sixty-eight. So. From a budget of. One hundred thirty-five. Not terrible, it's but. Well, not terrible, not terrible, but not that profitable. It's not bad. Yeah, not. not bad. Yeah, but it's not touching what the Michael Bay movies were doing. Yeah. Except yeah. for the last one, maybe. So. That's yeah. Mm, mm, makes me think, but now nah, now nah, I'm gonna keep my number here. I think about the All same. Right. Yeah. So that's about it, right? Yeah, that's everything. Yeah, that's everybody. All right. Okay, guys, thank you so much for checking us out, and we truly appreciate all the number of subscriptions we've been getting. I see that there's a bit of improvement. Uh, do like, share, subscribe, comment. Check out these guys. I promise you, if you like any of the stuff that we're doing here. If you follow these guys individually, you will not regret it. I promise you. Uh, thank you so much. This is African Frame. Let us know if there's any other films that you guys want us to review or have a look at. I do know there are other trailers of other films, but we're just specifically focusing on those that are on New Metro. But if you have any other suggestions, let us know in the comments and we'll definitely check it out. From myself, Mr. Extraordinary, Rob Sibeko, Bugmeister Cool, and Zana Zukum Lamba. We'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers! Are we, are we, are we? <laughs>